to you South Africa at six o'clock. It's the time for your feel good breakfast show. My name is Jamie Lee Domberg. And my name is Tabi Soma Kubela. Better yet, Uncle Tabsy. Welcome to it. Yes, your feel good breakfast show. You're starting the day off on the right note. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We to met you, you met today. you today. Yes. Denim on white. You got the memo. Ah, oh, tis the season to be jolly, <laughs> but to be matchy as well. And this morning we're celebrating all kinds of individuals. Uh, we're celebrating from uh, Banyana Banyana's head coach, Desiree Ellis, who has won the Sports Lifetime community award to celebrating Zozi Tunzi's incredible achievement and her year as Miss Universe and it's her anniversary. Yes, it's a morning to be inspired. Speaking about inspiration, we're also getting into a couple workouts. I think maybe that's why we're matching matching because we oh, like so, we're a couple. Yes, we are a couple. If South Africa, if you didn't know, it's time that you know, but we're also getting all into relationships this morning. The only person that's actually in a relationship is Mr. Raul de Mornay. Good the morning, The only Ryle. person? Well, you still. <laughs> you two are a couple. Yes, you couple of clowns, you. <laughs> but thank you so much, Mzansi, for waking up, with up, waking up with us this morning, of course, starting off the week on the right note. And you know it's going to be a brilliant week when Tapiso Makupela is in the studio, on time, punctual, and ready to wake you beautiful souls up. So this morning, we're asking you something quite interesting. We've got the specialist in town, but it's all about relationships. And this question this morning is, what kind of relationship do you have with your partner? And it's quite a complex one. So are you secure, anxious, preoccupied, dismissive, avoidant, or fearful, avoidant? Now, I can be honest with you and say I'm not 100% sure on what all of these mean. Maybe you guys at home do. So let us know on your social, or our social media channels, of course. That's the expressionshow.com and obviously our social media platforms. I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm so, so curious what these actually mean. I think I know the first one, secure, should mean that you're in a good relationship, things are solid, and you have that commitment and communication. But beyond that, that's where it gets a little bit complicated. But we do have this specialist coming through late in the show to shed some light on relationships, of course, and giving you all the tips that you need for the day. But before we continue, let's find out what's happening in the news. Oh, the slander, the dragging of my name through the mud. Oh, Raul de Moni, be careful. Uh, at six o'clock, well, past six o'clock, time for us to take a first look at those news headlines. We start off here at home where President Cyril Ramaphosa will address the nation tonight on developments in relation to the country's response to the coronavirus pandemic. The address follows meetings yesterday of the National Coronavirus Command Council and the President's Coordinating Council and a special sitting of Cabinet. Safety measures during the festive season and government stance on huge festive events that normally happen this time of the year were reportedly discussed. The exact time of the president's address will be announced later today. The president, as a, his address will come at a time that the country has recorded a total of almost 870,000 positive cases of COVID-19, with some 8,000 cases identified since the last report. Health Minister Zuelim Kizia announced last night 170 more deaths have been reported, 94 from the Eastern Cape, 11 from the Free State and 3 from Gauteng, with 4 from KwaZulu-Natal, 4 from the Northern Cape and 54 from the Western Cape. This brings the total deaths to 23,276. In international news, the Dakar Fashion Week in Senegal, which took place this weekend, looked very different this year. Event organizers uh, moved the catwalk outdoors into an idyllic baobab forest be, uh, because of the COVID-19 restrictions. Fashion Week producer Adama Ndiaye said that they had to find solutions and above all make sure that the show was not cancelled. She said the venue in fact promoted African culture and showcased the richness of Africa. She said it was wonderful to promote all the beautiful materials available in Africa. The UK and the EU have agreed to carry on post-Brexit trade talks after a phone call between leaders yesterday afternoon. The two sides earlier had said yesterday uh, was the deadline for a decision on whether to continue with talks. With the UK set to leave the EU rules at the end of the month. 
month. Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Union, said that the call had been constructive and useful, but UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson repeated his warning that a no-deal scenario was most likely. And next, news of three major patents coming up. It's been announced that Miss SA 2020, Shudufadzo Musida, Tato Musehle and Natasha Jube will represent the country at the Miss World, Miss Supranational and Miss Universe pageants respectively next year. And with these three exceptional ladies representing the country, it's no wonder there has been ample talk on social media of SA bagging all three titles. The Miss SA organization's creative director, Verna Vessels, says that the three pageants represent different values. Miss World must be a woman who is sophisticated, elegant and will live out an ethos of beauty with purpose. Miss Universe is all about vivaciousness, embracing one's femininity and being empowered as a woman. And for the Miss Supranational title, for which a South African will compete for the very first time, Vessels, uh, Wessels said that the judges would be looking towards grassroots movement and competitors really making a difference in their relevant communities or respective communities in something that should fit Tato Musehle as a medical doctor perfectly. Well, that's where we leave it for now. The next update will be just after 7 o'clock. Let's take a look at what's happening in sports with Ryle. Ah, thank you so much, Tavi. So now to look at the morning sports, starting off with rugby in the Curry Cup Roundup. Three wrapped up this weekend with victories from Western Province, the Bulls and the Lions. And now on Friday, Western Province beat the visiting Pumas 28-14 at Newlands. And the Sharks overcame the table-topping Bulls 32-29. And the Lions claimed a convincing 39-23 win over the Cheetahs in Bloemfontein. And now the Bulls are topping the standings on 33 points in total. And now moving over to the English Premier League, this weekend, the big clash between Man United and Manchester City played out to a goalless draw on Saturday. And in other major results, Everton edged Chelsea 1-0, Burnley stunned Arsenal 1-0, and Tottenham Hotspur and Liverpool recorded 1-0 draws in their respective clashes against Crystal Palace and Fulham over the weekend. Now, the Premier League football will continue tomorrow evening. And finally, in our motorsports news, Red Bull's Max Verstappen claimed victory in the season-ending Formula One race in Abu Dhabi yesterday. Now, the 23-year-old Dutchman won from pole position ahead of Mercedes teammates Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. And this weekend's uh, race with Verstappen uh, claims his second race win of the season and the 10th of his entire career. Now, the 2021 Formula One season is scheduled to start on the 21st of March next year. Now, that's a look at our sport this morning. Let's find out what's happening in and around the world with the weather with the beautiful Kukla Adams. Good morning to you, South Africa. It's a fresh start of a brand new day, a brand new week. So let's get into it the right way by having a look at your stunning sunrise pictures. Nick Lombard has posted this golden sunrise on our Facebook page all the way from the Glen Karoo. Nick, you can expect a very warm day, reaching a maximum of 31 degrees. Unombulelo Zandi Legama posted this blue skyline from Soweto in Josie Maboneng. Soweto, you can expect thunder showers with a maximum of 26 degrees. Thank you so much for your stunning sunrise pictures. Please continue to share them on our social media pages and we will show them live on the show. Now on to international news, the UN chief Antonio Guterres this weekend joined scientists and called on governments to declare a state of climate emergency. Speaking at the opening of the Climate Ambition Summit held online to mark five years since the Paris Climate deal. Guterres warned that nation's current commitments were far from enough to limit temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius. He added if they don't change course, the world may be headed for a catastrophic temperature rise of more than 3 degrees Celsius this century. He said that this is why he's calling on all world leaders to declare a state of climate emergency in their countries until carbon neutrality is reached. The EU 27 leaders group agreed to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least least 55% by 2030. Now we bring it back home with the temperatures for the rest of our beautiful country. If you find yourself at Bologwane, you start off this Monday morning with a low of 19, reaching a high of 28 degrees. Bombela, mostly sunny for you with a maximum of 34 degrees, but be on the lookout for some thunder showers as well. Pretoria, partly cloudy conditions, 16, 27. Johannesburg starts off the day with a low of 15, reaching an afternoon high of 26. Mahikeng, 18, 29 are your temperatures for this Monday morning. 
morning. Do expect 47% chance of rain forecast for this day. Klerksdorp, 16.29. Kimberley, it's a sunny day with a maximum of 34 degrees. Bloemfontein, you kick off your Monday with a low of 15, reaching a maximum of 31 degrees. Richards Bay, partly cloudy conditions, 24.35. Peter Maritzburg, it's a mostly sunny day in your part of the country, but also some showers are expected at 40% chance of rain. South Africa's playground Durban, 23.32. Mtata, 17.33, with 40% forecast for uh, rain this Monday. East London, 19.26. Cradock, you kick off the day with a low of 14, reaching a scorching 37 degrees in the afternoon. Port Elizabeth, 18.23. George, your temperatures range from 15 to 22 degrees. Now we're down to the mother city, Cape Town, 15.22. Vusta, 12 is your low and your high is 31 degrees. Sutherland comes through 928 and Uppington with the highest temperature in the country reaching a peak of 38 degrees this Monday morning. This is the perfect day to stay hydrated. Please put on your SPF and take care of yourselves but remember whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel good kind of day. Mm, thank you so much, Kutla Adams, for that amazing update. Let's talk about this December, because this December, Africa's biggest retail giant is spreading the festive cheer in more ways than one. Yes, you heard right. It's time to ungrump yourself for this festive season with unbeatable deals from game that you will give you all the happy feels and oh, make you feel festive. Man. Listen, Jamie and I have had so much fun with this campaign and really getting into it. Last week, we spent some time in Johannesburg just we getting did. into it, which you'll find out all about. But whether you are a kid or an adult, that's just a kid at heart you're going to want to get your hands on this xbox series x for a cool 11 triple nine take a look at uh, that and experience the speed and performance of a next gen all digital console at an accessible price this festive season there's that xbox it looks absolutely amazing Ooh, look at that who wouldn't yes. want to earn that i mean that's just stunning uh, and families often find themselves gathered around the tv binging movies and series in the holiday so why not binge in style with the Samsung 58-inch UHD Smart TV. Look at that TV. Now, that's the Smart TV. That's the TV that I wanted last year that I didn't get, that you promised me, but now you can get it for me. Oh, you can yeah. use your Christmas bonus, your December <laughs> bonus to get it. See, it's the perfect time. Ungrump yourself, man. And that gives you more accurate details, that particular TV, in bright and dark scenes uh, for all of your favorite films. But you are going to love that TV in every angle. And perhaps Santa's budget is looking for uh, something a little more within your price range, maybe. Well, this Samsung 40-inch UHD TV for only 4,499 with color and detail designed just for you might just find a place in your home these it holidays. Might, said might just now that these amazing deals are valid online or at a game store near you until tomorrow the 15th of December so visit game.co.za for more opening hours on Monday to Friday from 9 to 6 as well as Saturday from 9 to 5 uh, and then Sunday and public holidays from 9 to 4 so you can go get no, man, we're using your bonus. Mm. The spreading of joy this festive season isn't over yet. And remember, you do stand the chance to win big. Tell us how you will ungrump yourself this festive season. Reply to the competition post on the Expresso Facebook or Twitter page with that hashtag GodGame and ungrump yourself. And you stand the chance of winning 2,000 Rand Game Stores voucher. Those T's and C's do apply. You can find them on ExpressoShow.com. And this competition does run until the 22nd of December. December 2020. Jamie, we can't keep having these couple quarrels about like who's buying what on the TV, man. Sorry, just give us a moment. No, but every time you promise.
Happy birthday to you. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. When you hear that sound, Ryle de Morning, yes. you know that it's about that time of the morning where we wish you, our loved and loyal viewers, a happy birthday. If you are celebrating today, while well, you share it with the beautiful Tatum Akeshwar. She turns 37 years old today, right? Absolute stunner. She is even up until this very day, Kukle. Wow. Yes. Honestly, now she, I know she scooped up the Miss South Africa title in 2008 and represented South Africa at Miss Universe 2009 and placed in the top 10. Wow. Now she was also the face of South Africa at the Miss World 2009 where she finished as the second runner-up and 11 years later she is still accomplishing a lot in the beauty and fashion industry. So to you Danny. a nothing but a happy Danny. happy birthday indeed. What a stunner Tatum. Happy birthday. I hope it's nothing but a magic one. It's a magical episode actually. Magical show this morning because we're focusing on our beauty queen, South African beauty queen yes. who are going out there to just claim their titles all over the world, man. Slay, slay, slay. Now we're moving down to uh, the real celebrities, which is you, our loved and loyal viewers. This one reads a birthday wish to our mother, Charlotte, from her loving boys, Cole and Cohen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to mommy. Happy birthday to you. God bless you today, God bless you always, God bless you and keep you, happy birthday to you, hip 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 hooray! Happy birthday. Happy birthday, mom. <laughs> Happy birthday to mommy. They're probably counting down the seconds because they're waiting to go outside to say, okay? <laughs> uh, that was so cool, that wish. Now, the next one is from Sharice Beatrix. Well, it's actually Sharice Beatrix's birthday. And the message says, Happy birthday to you, Sharice Beatrix Elizabeth Johnson. I love you a whole lot, Baba. My beauty with brains. Little Klein Groot Mensi. Let's check this one out. Ten years ago, the 14th of December, I was blessed by God with a little girl. Her name is Sharice Beatrix Elizabeth Johnson. Johnson. Baba, a very happy birthday to you. I love you so much and may you enjoy the day. Mommy loves you, loves you, loves you a lot. Nothing like a mother's <laughs> love. Nothing like a mother's yeah. love. That was a beautiful birthday message. Uh, this one goes out to Raik Williams. Happy birthday to you. Happy, have a wonderful seventh birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> I love it when everyone wishes themselves happy birthday. Yes. It's the best. And I yes. think they give themselves the best credit as well. They do it justice. I love that. Now, Ma Brenny is celebrating a birthday this morning. I'd like to wish Ma Brenny a happy birthday and God's richest blessings. And this is with lots of lovies from Skylar Yeovil. Let's check this one out. Happy birthday to you, God bless you today, God bless you always, God bless you and keep you, happy birthday to you. Sweet, sweet voice. Indeed. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and lastly, this one goes out to Alea Sam Phobes. It says, happy birthday, we love you. I just like to say happy birthday to my baby sister. I just like to say today from a mother, a father, and a brother. Oh, is that not just special? <laughs> to everybody out there, happy birthday, of course. Now, you're going to send us your 15-second videos on WhatsApp to 071-640-6551 so you can wish your loved ones a happy birthday live right here on our show. And we might even just give them a ring to brighten up their day and make it that much more of a happy, happy birthday. Cheers to all of you. Oh, fine. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, that's fine. I saw you later, don't you worry. You. <laughs> If your child hasn't written their wish list for Santa yet, but you want to beat the lines and do some shopping, check out these Christmas gift ideas from the experts themselves. Please welcome Zia Hope and Leia Stain, who are part of the Game Kids Toys Club. They are giving us the inside scoop and their honest opinions on some of the coolest toys available at the moment. Zia and Leia, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. I'm very excited to have the two of you here. Now, I wanted to know from both of you, how does it feel to be part of the Games Toys Club where you get to experience some of these the coolest toys before anyone else? Leia, let's start with you. It's amazing. I've always wanted to be part of something like this. 
Oh, that's awesome. And you, Zia? I feel blessed and lucky. Oh, you two are lucky. You get to play with the toys before anyone else. Now, Leia, my first question is to you. Can you tell us what toy you were given to review and what you love most about it? I love the heart and the front, that sequence that you that you can... It's like magic sequence, so you can have it the one color. Is that turquoise on the one side? <gasps> Ooh, that looks really cool. That looks cool. I love that, the, that my Duracorn, that coral, is scented. Is it nice and soft or is it quite a hard toy? Very soft and I love to cuddle it. Oh, do you think your friends will be jealous that you have one of those? Yes. Oh, Leia, that is amazing. Now, Zia, I wanted to know from you, which toy were you given? Laptop. You were given a laptop. That is pretty impressive. What have you been playing on your laptop? Maps. And it's got a little mouse. And then can you open the laptop for me? I want to see what you've been playing. Can you show the camera? I feel like everyone needs to see your really cool laptop. Oh, that's quite cool. Does your laptop play any cool music? Yes. Okay. Do, can you turn the laptop on for me? I would love to hear what you have to say. Ooh. That is absolutely awesome. So, Leia, I want to ask you, why do you think parents should add that toy to their shopping list? Because it has so many different surprises and it's so fun to open. Amazing. And Zia, for you, why should parents add that toy to their wish list? Because it teaches school. Okay, it's very good and very educational. Now, I believe you guys have to rate this toy. So I'm now going to ask you to give us your official rating of the toy using your emoji panel board. Are you ready? I'm gonna ask you together and then you're gonna lift it. So I'm gonna count you down. Three, two, one. Oh, amazing! It is a thumbs up, it is a heart emoji, it is a love emoji, it is an all round love for these reviews. Leia and Zia, thank you so much for your time and enjoy these really cool toys from game. Thank you. <laughs> Only a pleasure, bye. 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 With the festive season around the corner, a lot of kids will be writing their festive wish list. So why not take the advice from our experts and head on to your nearest game store to get unbeatable deals that will give you and your little one the happy feels this festive season. Their opening hours are Monday to Friday from 9 to 6, Saturdays from 9 to 5, and on Sundays and public holidays from 9 to 4.
be outside, loving your green spaces, enjoying the transformation you can bring about with your hands. Make steel part of your sweet summer magic because with steel, summer is better. And so is your home. Bring nature home with steel. It's my feel good worth it show. Welcome back. Of course, you're still locked in. It's your feel-good breakfast show. And we wrapped up yet another exciting weekend of sport from the local Curry Cup competition to the English Premier League and, of course, the final race of the F1 calendar in Abu Dhabi. Now, sports anchor Jeremy Harris is here to chat things through about the biggest sporting highlights of the weekend. Jeremy, how are you doing this morning? Good, bud. Good to see you. I'm also good, man. I, I, I we'll talk about some issues that I have later on, but let's start with the rugby, of course. <laughs> A lot of crazy stuff that happened. I, I, I definitely want to jump into that first game, the highlight of the weekend, Sharks versus the Bulls. What an epic game. It seemed like it was neck and neck all the way through, right? Yeah, no, look, I've got to tell you, I didn't call that result. I mean, mm. I, I really thought that the Bulls would come away. It's only their second loss in the Curry Cup. Yeah. Um, and so I was very surprised by the fact that, uh, that they slipped up. But, uh, you know, as we said on Friday, the Sharks are a good team. There's some good players in there. And, you know, I guess that those good players came, came to work they uh, and they us. fired a 10 <laughs> on a 10 on, <laughs> on Saturday. Some, some sulky, some smooth skills, of course, getting some big points on the board. But literally down to the wire, the man that is Mr. Reliable himself. I don't know if you picked that that last final kick of the game to draw to draw it out. Who would have called that? No. Mone staying missing right no, in front I mean, of the I polls think like that. that. In your what? sleep, you would have slotted that yeah. normally, um, <laughs> but uh, not to be on that night. And and as I say, it was it was maybe the pressure that the Sharks players were bringing to bear. Yeah. What, I don't know what it was. It's just an off night. But uh, on that particular occasion, the Bulls go down. And and why do you think making the decision not to go for the line out and push for that try and the win? I mean, they looked like they had the strength and they have the weight in the pack to get that going. So why opt for the kick and the draw? It is an interesting decision. I think you find a lot of teams, you know, have got to weigh. That up because it's a bit of a gamble because mm. you could go for the line out, you might lose the line out then. Whereas, you know, a more nice stand penalty, surely it's always going to go over. Yeah, sure thing. But not so much. Little did he know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the other fixtures of the weekend, province, of course, playing a decent game, I would imagine. Yes, look, um, I mean, we I think we did call that one on, uh, mm. when we spoke about it on Friday. Um, 28 14 bonus points, exactly what John Dobson needed from his boys, uh, and he got it. So, so um, that sort of keeps province very much alive still in the Curry Cup. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a, a good result. On Unfortunately, still in, in an empty stadium. Yeah, it, it seems very ominous and very different to yes. what we used to, of course. Exactly. And then that final fixture, the Lions coming through, playing quite a decent game as well. Some sulky skills, yep. some, some moves from the back line, which I, well, I quite enjoyed, actually. It was a very entertaining game uh, to see. And it looked like um, Alton Yankees was a little bit on form once again. So, yes. So the one thing, one thing that, I, that I've, I felt was like it was the, the, the Lions were playing the cheaters at their own game. Uh, you know, mm. cheaters are, are sort of notorious for open running rugby and... And, and getting the ball through their hands as quickly as possible. And the Lions turned it on them and did it, yeah. to, did it to them, you know, so. Yeah, well, look, Kaika action was obviously nothing but magic. Now, moving over to the Premier League, of course, some interesting results. It looks like this entire league, no one is stepping up and running away with it. it either, and I, and I chatted to uh, Carl about this the other day, it's so difficult and different to see such balanced teams in the league. I, I, I used to think that the top years weren't playing that well, but I've got to give it to the guys. Like, I mean, Leeds coming through, you, you got your guys causing incredible results and I don't think anybody running through those um, um, wins at all. I mean, take the United derby, a 0-0 no -no draw. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts on that game. Not not too much to talk about, really. No, it, it, unfortunately, goalless draws are, are never exciting affairs, but uh, I, I suppose uh, for me, it, there's been quite a bit of pressure on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at, at Manchester United. That kind of result where, where I thought that United did maybe a little bit more than than City uh, was probably just exactly what uh, what the boss needed there from a, from a United perspective. It might just ease the pressure on him. On him. Man, they were up against a decent team, playing such a brilliant... Uh, I, I just think the tactics, especially in their first half, Scott Parker got his chance to just really deliver. And, I mean, it showed. 1-0 at, at half-time. Yes, no, exactly. And, I mean, I think that uh, Jürgen Klopp was dropping so many bombs. That, Look, did you see the man on the sideline? <laughs> yeah! I was man, worried that he was going to have, have a heart attack or something. I thought he might have put the boots on and run on himself <laughs> the way he was yeah, shouting. Yeah, no, he wasn't him. happy. So, I mean, mm. that certainly spurred them into, the, into a second-half revival. But... 1-1 one, one is, is how they ended it, which, yeah. which was a surprise. So for me, it is a surprise to see how they only had to wake up so late in that second half and think again, too little, too late. Coming through, equalising. Exactly. Uh, surprisingly taking Salah off in the last 10 minutes to bring Origi on for, I, I, I think, what, what must have been a lacklustre effort from Salah especially. But interesting to see that we're just not switching on when we're supposed to. And this is supposed to be a walkaway. Obviously coming back from a 4-0 defeat against yeah. Wolves and then a team that's in the bottom tier. Hey, lots of questions, huh? <laughs> lots of <laughs> questions. 
that's a good question. Anyway, uh, latest results, of course, that leaves Tottenham Hotspurs on the top of the league. Yeah. Right. And then uh, finishing off, we've got the F1 results. I was quite impressed to see, uh, I think it was Verstappen taking yes. the win there after yes. a podium finish. Look, I mean, he drove well all the way through yeah. the weekend. Friday, Saturday, he drove nicely. I mean, he got himself to, to the front of the grid mm. uh, and a polished ride, to, um, you know, yesterday. Uh, the, I mean, Max Verstappen might not be he's not my personal favourite driver, but he's certainly very talented mm. uh, and one for the future. I think that, that results like that and, and spending time with, with really big name drivers will, yeah. will mature him as a, as a driver and even as a person. Uh, and I think he showed a matured drive yesterday you know I thought Especially that, that you know, podium precisely I thought pressure, that he, yeah. he did really nicely it's it's always tricky to to sit on pole and then to win the race because there's that pressure there's that expectation yeah but I mean he did really nicely so I mean well done team in, in definitely and I think in his entire career this is like his second win or second yes yeah, so I mean as well so there's still a lot of ground to be covered for I him. think it's gonna be a very interesting Max Verstappen next season of course <laughs> exactly interesting and then I think also we, I'm hearing rumors of Red Bull potentially taking over the Honda power block uh, unit because they're gonna be stepping out of the there's F1. so many there's so many rumors coming through in F1. Uh, I mean, of course, there's a lot of driver movement now. There's there's more conversation about who's signing for who, which team and and we, you know which manufacturer is using which power plant. So I mean, I think that you know the the 2021 into 2022, who knows, uh, season will be will be very exciting. Ah, uh, Jeremy coming through with the goods, of course, delivering <laughs> for the week and all the magic. If you guys missed it, of course, now you know what's going down. Now again, a massive thank you to Jeremy for joining us this morning, and from reviewing our weekend sports to celebrating our females in national women's soccer. We catch up with Desiree Ellis. Let's check it out. There is certainly no slowing down Banyana Banyana head coach Desiree Ellis from leading her team to the FIFA Women's World Cup last year to winning a seventh COSAFA Women's Championship title while continuing her incredible work through her charity. She's indeed a superwoman we love and admire. Now, two weeks ago, Desiree won the prestigious Sport Lifetime Community Award for her good work in the community. The Banyana Banyana coach joined us now via video call to tell us more about her charity. Good morning, Desiree. How are you? Good morning, Jamie, and welcome to the viewers. Firstly, congratulations on winning the Sport Lifetime Community Award. How does this award even make you feel, and what does it mean to you? Look, Jamie, I never do things for awards and rewards. You know, I always just do things because I like doing things and, uh, you know, and just put my best foot forward and, you know, and then if there is an award or reward, we don't say no thank you, but we never do it for that, you know. I believe we, we put on earth to make a difference and I'm just trying to make that little difference. And look, where it brought you now being acknowledged on this platform. But I want to talk a bit more about your foundation. What exactly do you do there? Well, my foundation has not officially been launched yet, launched yet due to COVID, but um, it's about um, community empowerment and development. Um, so it's a broad base where you just try to empower and develop and try to create opportunities for others. You know, when I was growing up, I had a, my late father was my biggest critic, but he was also my biggest supporter. And I know there's a lot of... Um, kids out there that don't have that necessary support. So um, I just want to come in there and try and help where I can, um, you know, not just for kids, but for, for adults as well. I love that. What was your main motivation for just starting this idea for uh, your own foundation in your community instead of just joining an existing one? Look, um, I think uh, I've built up a, a, a reputation and I think I can use use my name to try and get assistance to, to help others. And um, instead of joining another organization, why not use my own name and, and try and get assistance and help others? And during COVID, I was, I was able to come home to Cape Town. Um, and and uh, during COVID, I then you know, collaborated with the Alcado Andrews Foundation, who's already very, very active in Anova Park, um, because I knew that sooner or later, I would have to go back to Johannesburg and get back to work. So I've collab collaborated with her and uh, she does fantastic work in the community. And through, through that, you know, we, we made sure that we try to help as many people as we can during COVID. And now, of course, turning to Banyana Banyana, three weeks ago, your team won a fourth consecutive Kosafu Women's Championship title and seventh title overall. Another massive achievement by our national team. So congrats once again. What really worked for Banyana Banyana at this year's tournament with so many young players? I think it's the teamwork. I think it's the team ethic. I also think, you know, there's a lot of respect between players and staff. Um, and, and I think that plays a huge role. And each and, everyone, each and everyone plays a big role 
you know, the technical team is, is, is huge behind the scenes, the medical team and, and the rest of the staff. And then obviously the players, they've got to go onto the field and they've got to make sure that they then execute the plans. And I, I just kept saying to them, you know, let's take it one game at a time, but you're here to make your mark, you're here to raise your hand and you're here to make sure that people remember you because the first interview that I did, I was, I was to ask that um, none of the faces here are familiar to the African continent. And I said, they might not be familiar to you, but they're familiar to us. And I think now after this tournament, I think a lot of them are familiar to the African continent. And Banyana Banyana has given our country so many reasons to smile. What do you think still needs to happen for your team to get really the recognition that they deserve? Look, um, we were very excited with the minister, um, you know, celebrating us. And we always say, you know, let's not make comparisons. Let's let's just celebrate the, the achievements. Let's just celebrate, um, you know, what the, what the team has done. And we just have to continue, you know, um, putting our best foot forward. You know, we always urging corporates to come on board with because with more corporates on board, we can do so much more. So the plea is always for corporates to come on board, you know, and assist us because Cecil and Safa have been fantastic, but they can't do it alone. Absolutely. Well, once again, a massive thank you to Banyana Banyana coach Desiree Ellis for taking the time to chat to us this morning. Banyana is indeed a team that deserves all the recognition, love and praise for their incredible achievements. We can't wait to see our national women's team in action again. Everybody, this is your Feel Good Breakfast Show on a Monday morning right here on SABC3. And we are about to celebrate the amazing women in our life. She is a daughter, she is a wife, she is a sister, she's an aunt, she is the gogo, she is the mother figure in your life. She is a woman. Create a happy little moment and show the mom in your life how much you love her with a personal gift from Woolies. Now we took a trip to Woolies and selected a few lovely gifts gifts for our gorgeous moms. And I'll start with you because yes. I know you have such a special relationship <laughs> with your mom, Auntie Dawn. Uh, I've never met Auntie Dawn, but I feel like I know it just the way you speak about her. Yeah, so obviously mom's so special to me and I, any opportunity that we get, I love to celebrate it. So what I thought I'd get for her is she loves tea. Uh, she, <laughs> she loves having a tea in the morning. I remember being tasked with the, the chores of making her a cup of tea every morning and every evening. So yeah, a little bit of nostalgia there. I don't know if it was a good thing or not, but now <laughs> I, I appreciate it. So I got her these awesome tea mugs. They're lovely ceramics. It's got a crazy animal print on. It's perfect for the festive and I think just to kind of warm her heart for the festive season. I'm not around. And then just to couple it and pair it with, uh, I got these triple chalk 
cookies. They are absolutely delicious. I'll just show you guys over there. So it's triple chocolate. It's got some white chocolate chunks in and dark cho cho chocolate chunks. And it's actually made in Burland. So it's handmade, Jamie. So I thought it just give that extra little touch and extra little bit of love. And again, we got the animal print. So obviously, me being a nature boy at heart, I thought I'd remind my mother, especially when I'm not around and not at home, that nature boy is Aww. there. He's at home. He's happy with his animals. And you can enjoy your cookies and your and your tea, of course. That is so sweet because <laughs> now comfort. when she's watching you in the morning, because we know that she watches you every yes. single morning, you can <laughs> sit with her amazing uh, animal print mug and with her chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, that's for moms. That's beautiful. Love that. <laughs> so for my mom... Um, Patricia loves... Patricia! You didn't know my mom's name I before the segment. I, I was going to ask you on <laughs> what's my mom's name. Because you never want to invite me to your house. I'm very offended by this. Because The thing is why I don't want to invite you, because my mom puts out slanger cheese, and she loves <laughs> to entertain people, and I know you're going to be there like, I don't need slanger cheese. Yeah, I don't, not about that carb life, girl. I don't do carbs. No, I'm teasing. My mom absolutely <laughs> loves entertaining people. So when, whenever, uh, like festive season, birthdays, Christmas, yeah. she loves to have a spread of things and treats. So I thought that I would get her these amazing all locally made shortbread biscuits Ooh, nice. it's dipped with chocolate as well but what i love about this is the the design as well so the tin itself um, is inspired by a peacock mm. and when when you're done with all the biscuits inside she can just put in all That's a like sewing a, a kit and everything. yes a oh, wow i need one of these <laughs> This is actually why I don't invite you to my house because I know he's going to come with his barricade bucket. But yes, you can take this for the barricade bucket. And then Patricia Domberg loves to smell great. Whenever I have perfume on, she's like, do you like of butter's dye? So I thought, you know what, why not gift her with her own perfume? So this is the Bliss uh, gift set. It's just beautiful notes of musk, some um, sandalwood. So for her to smell good, Patricia Dombek, now you don't have to steal my perfume <laughs> in the morning. Uh, so yeah, I love that I could get this all at Woolies um, and just create more happy moments and festive moments for the rest of the year. So when I come and visit your mom, I'm going to see the, the, the silver spoons out. I'm going to see the shortbread and she's going to be smelling second a rake so lekker. Yes. I but can't we, wait. I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to check that everything. And gluten-free slanger cheese as well. And gluten -free <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Alice, guys, talking about creating happy little moments, of course, like the ones that we have with our moms. And oh, Aww. I love this one so much. You guys look so good together. You wow. Look like twins. You do, actually. Oh, that is awesome. I can't tell who's actually the daughter there. Yeah. <laughs> Behave. This is actually also why I don't invite you to my house. But, and this is, mom. yeah, this is my mom's kids, of course. I don't know what I was doing with that cash, but yeah, this is the woman that has delivered Nature Boy into the world. Oh, we love you yes. for that, indeed. We love you. We, we really appreciate that you gave us this human being over here. Ah, man, some special memories there. Now, talking about those happy moments, of course, it's time to congratulate a lucky viewer because he has won a 500 grand voucher courtesy of Woolies. So, a big congratulations, drum roll! <laughs> Enjoy the shopping booth there. Now, if you want to stand at the chance to win a 500 and Woolies voucher, visit our competition post on the Expresso Facebook or Twitter page and tell us what Woolies gift you would like to gift the women in your life this festive season. Don't forget to include that hashtag, which is Woolies Christmas. The competition closes today at 9 a.m. And those T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. <laughs> The season to give. This Christmas, it's all about appreciating those happy little moments. Yes, it is appreciate. It is all about appreciating all those happy little moments. And listen, you get to create those happy little moments yes. every day. In every fact, single day. It's another feel good morning here on your feel good breakfast show. And uh, there's only one way to add a festive spring to our step, and we know that that's with our Nespresso's hazelnutty torta di nocchiole. Uh, it's like having a coffee. Then a delicious cake. And oh. you know I'm always on standby for a good coffee, but also a good cake, right? Same. Absolutely. Mm. I can't wait because this is also part of the festive trio that comes okay. with the amaretti flavor, also a fan favorite. Stunning. Of course, the tortilla di nocciole flavor, which is a vanilla hazelnutty kind of flavor. Yeah. And if you enjoy your coffee, kind of Italian style, uh -huh. espresso, then the Il Cafe is for you. Oh, listen to you sounding a bit like a, a, a coffee e expert there. We kind of have oh. to be because we've been enjoying Nespresso every day yes. and you can't help but immerse yourself within the Nespresso culture as well. Fantastic. And the wonderful thing about this one is yeah. that it's a blend of 
Brazilian bourbon Arabica beans mm. and washed Colombian Arabica. Great. Oh, I'm not going to waste make... time. I'm Please actually going to get, get on into uh, to making us uh, 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 some coffee. I'm going to make you mm -hmm. an uh, espresso. Yes. How do you feel about that? I May I have a lungo, actually? Okay, I'll make you a lungo. That's fine. But we're making use of uh, this. Look at this. It's so compact. It's so cute. The uh, uh, Essenza Mini, which is fantastic. This is the one we actually gave away. Yeah, Remember really? when we gave this away yes, uh, to one is. lucky person? So I've already got the capsule inside here, mm -hmm. and it's very simple to operate. I mean, you've got two options here, which makes it really convenient for people on the move. You just want to make sure that you get, like, uncomplicated coffee. You've got yeah. the uh, espresso on here, but you've got the lungo on this. You've only got two buttons. You can't mess it up, mm. I swear. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to do the lungo. So even if this was uh, Kuche making this or trying to make this, she really would not mess it up. So you've got your lungo going in there, and it's all happening. And what we're going to get here is we are going to get a cereal taste with notes of toasted hazelnut and vanilla. Your lunga is going. Can you smell I can already the smell richness it. of the coffee that's coming through? I can already smell it. Yes. Uh, so that's coming through. It's really fantastic. So what you've got is you've got a separate uh, 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 milk frother on the mm. side here. It's an espresso milk frother, which is great. The, the two come separate. These yes. two aren't attached. So your milk will be on here. It's connected to the uh, the power socket on mm -hmm. there. And you can warm it up as you... Is our milk already frothed? Our milk is already done and ready. Okay. Baby girl. When Perfect. this is done, I'm just going to hoi the milk in there A little for bit you of milk. And have you go... And in fact, we've got uh, uh, Nick, our artist of the day here, who yes. absolutely uh, was like bright and early on time for this show. I'm going to make him uh, an exactly Nespresso, an Nespresso quickly. Uh, so we just get the capsule. Yes, okay. please. Throw in the capsule for our guy. So and as then... Uncle Tabsy has mentioned, we have Nick Billington in the building, mm. everybody, who is yep. going to be gracing the Espresso stage yeah. with absolutely wonderful tunes. Please give him a warm Espresso welcome. Nick, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank are you. Are you excited? Are you happy? Cannot wait. I'm very happy to be in Cape Town today. <laughs> I think, oh. Nick, the one thing that's probably got you more excited than just being on the show and sharing your incredible music and talking about your brand new single, mm -hmm. You Make Me So High, is getting to taste this uh, espresso. 100%. And visit? you cannot have a morning without coffee. Absolutely yes, thank you. Not. You're my that's type true. of guy. There you thank go. You. An Imagine. espresso for you on there. Oh, matching. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that. I thought about that. Well, remember, you do stand the chance to win an incredible Nespresso barista device worth 6,500 Rand. And what you need to do is simply uh, go and reply to the competition post on Espresso's Facebook or Twitter page and tell us why is Nespresso barista device on your Christmas wish list? And yes. I know it is on your wish list. So why? <laughs> tell us why. There are a number of reasons, okay? Yeah. Remember to include the hashtag, hashtag Nespresso Expresso. Now the competition closes at midnight mm -hmm. on the 17th of December. Thank you, Uncle Tabsy. Mm -hmm. Just in time for Christmas. Enter right now. T's and C's do apply and can be found on expressoshow.com. Nick, get in there, please. I would like to mm. see you go in Definitely. the espresso. I will not complain. Thank you very much for that. Ah, look we at chose that. some of the world's <laughs> rarest local coffee crafts and refined them to create five distinct new tastes. After all, we are the choices we make.
says to you, can't work from home workers. Bo terminator. Because every meeting key, I'll be back. The mask for getting shoppers. <laughs> and you, who go the extra mile instead of keeping just 1.5 meters. To you who opened your doors again, we take our hats off. Nina, who kept us moving? 100%. And of course, there are no mai in general dealers. You might not be essential workers, but you too played an essential role in keeping Mzansi working. And that's why we're giving you a chance to win your share of 5 million rand. Join Nedbank today. It's my feel good work this show. Here's a thought. Together, let's give one million meals towards a hashtag Zero Hunger 2030. In partnership with Gift of the Givers Woolworths, aims to provide a million meals to families in need after having reached their one million meal target with their fill a bag campaign. Ali Sable, project manager at Gift of the Givers, joins us now to chat about the work that they are doing within our communities, what he has experienced on the ground distributing food parcels to those in desperate need, and how exactly you and I I can get involved with the Christmas Give campaign. Let's give another one million meals. Ali, a very good morning, my friend. Good morning to you and all the viewers out there. Ali, this is such important work you're doing out there, but uh, tell us about uh, the work that Gift of the Givers does within South Africa's communities in need and the role that you play, uh, particularly in this project. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has been our busiest time in our 28-year history. Uh, my role is to reach out to these vulnerable communities and oversee the distribution of aid. So during this festive season, obviously the need doesn't go away. There is an even stronger push for the distribution of food parcels. Where people are used to sharing, maybe gifting others, being with family. How exactly does the project determine which areas and communities to distribute the food parcels to? And what changes do you observe over this Christmas period? The Christmas uh, of 2020, it's going to be a bleak for not hundreds, but thousands of families across South Africa. We see the cause of desperation coming in on a daily basis to our call center, where people are pleading for food. As we know, the highlight of every child for, the, for a year is the day of Christmas. So from the start of lockdown, Woolworths has been one of the first to make sure people from every corner of South Africa is being fed and their hopes kept alive. We choose the areas which people find difficulty going into and uh, this year, for uh, especially for the kids, Woolworths has come out with a care cat toy <laughs> which we hope to bring to smiles of thousands of children um, across South Africa and together we can do it. The time is very, very short but um, there's still time to make a difference in not hundreds but thousands of families' lives across South Africa. When the truck pulls up, and the recipients see the food parcels being offloaded. The smiles of the, on their faces is already priceless. You can see the relief from them seeing the sight of a food pack being offloaded from the truck. Some of them break out in, sand, in, in, in song and dance when the, when, at the sight of the food parcels. During this process, actually seeing what's going on on the ground floor when you are handing out the meal packs, that there have been many memorable moments that have certainly affected you on a deep emotional level. During these handovers, what moments have stood out for you the most? And added to that, maybe what words of encouragement would you give to those who admire what is being done but are maybe hesitant to take that first step? You are correct. There are many real memorable moments, but the one that stands out for me the most is in last month we visited a town of Novaport in the Northern Cape, where a grandmother uh, came with her, with her child and her grandchildren to come help her carry these food items. So um, when the food parcel distribution, food care packs distribution was done, she came to me first and thanked us on a personally to say thank you for giving, for giving us food. She could not take a medication for the last few days as she had no food to eat. And, she, and her children, her grandchildren, also thank us, as they said, finally, they can put this food away. They can look forward to having a Christmas day with food on the table. This, this, they call this the miracle packs. Uh, you know, if, uh, if, you, if you uplift a person emotionally as well, um, it, it, carries them, it carries them through. And, you know, because many of them, they think no one is coming there to help them. Uh, no one is reaching out to them. And um, there are many such stories, and especially amongst the children, 
you know, the festive period, the school holidays for them, and with this, especially with the, with the care cat toys as well, at least they can, there will be something carry them forward into the new year. That's especially over this time of the year. Ali, thank you so much to you and your team, the Woolies team as well. An amazing collaboration, doing incredible work. One million has already been achieved, so we can know that we can do it again with a certainty. But just keep fighting the good fight, my friend. We really appreciate you and absolutely love what you represent. So thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, that is Ali Sable, project manager at Gift of the Givers. Now, with just two weeks left to hit the target of one million meals, which we can do. Come we can on. all make it happen. Help us raise funds by looking uh, out for the QR code at Till Points in store and scan using SnapScan or your bank app. You can also purchase a Christmas reusable bag, which I think is a fantastic way yeah. to contribute. You should be donation. doing that anyway. You should absolutely be doing it. In any case, a uh, donation of 10 Rand will be made towards hashtag ZeroHunger2030. And uh, if you purchase a Relate bracelet, a donation, of three rent will be made towards that hashtag zero hunger 2030 yeah and don't forget that you can now also get swiping every time you swipe your my school my village my planet or linked woolies card from the first up until the 31st of this month of december an extra donation will be made towards the goal of another one million meals it's the little gestures that make all of the difference and i suggest right now go and visit woolworths.co.za slash zero hunger to find out more we can and we should do something about it. I love that we can all still make a difference out there because it really is an Ubuntu nation. It is indeed, of course. Now, the societal change is not possible without, of course, the effective leaders and, again, Jamie, the world's biggest network of change agents. So, of course, we're talking about global citizens and it's gearing up to honour those who are making extraordinary efforts for the world's most vulnerable with the upcoming 2020 Global Citizen Prize Show. Now, the second edition is being hosted again by my favourite and all of our favourite here on your Feel Good Breakfast show, singer and songwriter, John Legend and we're being encouraged to celebrate the heroes among us who have who have stepped up with strength with compassion and with humanity against a backdrop of unprecedented global changes. Yeah so four major awards in the categories of global citizen of the year world leader of the year business leader and of course the special Cisco youth leadership award will be distributed as well as local country hero awards given in six key markets including South Africa and we congratulated our deserving winners the wise collective last week. Now, in addition to the awards, the broadcast and digitally stream show will feature inspirational stories and unforgettable performances that will bring together influencers, artists, activists and global leaders to remind everyone that there are so many reasons to be hopeful as we enter uh, 2021. Yeah, so be witness to who's being awarded at the 2020 Global Citizen Prize Show and you can catch it right here on SBC3 on Sunday, the 20th of December, 9.30 to escape the norm this summer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, team. It's just gone 7 o'clock here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Time for us to take a look at those news headlines one more time. We start off here in South Africa where the Gauteng Health Department yesterday pleaded with family contacts of matriculants who tested positive for COVID-19 to go into quarantine. This as some 950 pupils contracted the virals from a recent single year-end rage party in KZN. More than 1,300 learners from Johannesburg and Tswani were in attendance and 1,050 of them had reportedly been found through contact tracing measures. With fears that the event may result in an even further spread of the virus, the department is worried some uh, learners have refused to cooperate with officials. President Cyril Ramaphosa will address the nation tonight on developments in relation to the country's response to the coronavirus pandemic. The address follows meetings yesterday of the National Coronavirus Command Council, the President's Coordinating Council and a special sitting of Cabinet. Safety measures during the festive season and government stance on huge festive events that normally take place this time of the year were reportedly discussed. The exact time of the President's address will be announced later today. In international news, Germany is to go into a hard lockdown over the Christmas period as the number of deaths and infections from the coronavirus has reached record levels. The new lockdown will run from Wednesday to the 10th of January. Chancellor Angela Merkel blamed Christmas shopping for a considerable rise in social contacts. Non-essential shops will close across the country from Wednesday, as will schools with children to be cared for at home wherever possible. Only essential shops, such as those selling food, would remain open. Restaurants, bars and leisure centres have already been closed since November.
The Dakar Fashion Week in Senegal, which took place this weekend, looked very different this year. Event organizers moved the catwalk outdoors into an idyllic uh, baobab forest before, or rather because of the COVID-19 restrictions. Fashion Week producer Adama Ndiaye said that they had to find solutions and above all, make sure that the show was not canceled. She said that the venue in fact promoted African culture and showcased the richness of Africa. She said it was wonderful to promote all the beautiful materials available in Africa. And now sad news again from the world of entertainment. Charlie Pratt, the first African American to enter the country Music Hall of Fame passed away on Saturday from COVID-19. He was 86 years old. Pratt, undoubtedly one of the country or rather country music's biggest stars, was born the son of a sharecropper uh, on a cotton farm in Mississippi in 1934. Uh, he served in the United States Army and was a top baseball player before later turning to music. 52 of his songs reached the country top 10, including the hits All I Have to Offer You Is Me and Kiss an Angel Good Morning. He begged three Grammy Awards and only last month was awarded the Country Music Association's Lifetime Achievement Award in Nashville, Tennessee in what proved to be his last public appearance. Of the many tributes which have poured in for Pride was one from Billy Ray Cyrus, who said, and I quote, Charlie Pride was a gentleman, a legend, and a true trailblazer, adding he took down walls and barriers meant to divide. RIP, and that's where we leave it for now. Here's a final look at, uh, a look at the sports with uh, Raul de Monet. Uh, thank you so much, Tabi. So now looking at our sport and starting off with the rugby, Curry Cup Round 3 wrapped up this weekend with victories from Western Province, the Bulls and the Lions. And now on Friday, Western Province beat the visiting Pumas 28-14 at Newlands in an empty one at that. But the Sharks overcame the table-topping Bulls 32-29 and the Lions claimed a convincing 39-23 win over the Cheetahs in Bloemfontein. Now the Bulls are topping the standings on 33 points. Now moving over to soccer and in the English Premier Premier League this weekend, the big clash between Man United and Manchester City played out to a goalless draw on Saturday. And in other major results, Everton edged Chelsea 1-0, Burnley stunned Arsenal 1-0, and Tottenham Hotspur as well as Liverpool recorded one all draws in their respective clashes against Crystal Palace and Fulham. Now the Premier League football will continue tomorrow evening, so you want to catch that for sure. And last but not least, we're moving over to our motorsport, and Red Bull's Max Verstappen claimed victory in the season-ending Formula 1 race in Abu Dhabi yesterday. Now the 23-year-old Dutchman won from pole position ahead of Mercedes teammates Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. And now this was Verstappen's second race win of the season and the 10th of his entire career. And the 2021 Formula One season is scheduled to start on the 21st of March next year. That's all we have for your local and international sport this morning. Let's find out what's happening in and around the weather with Kukle Adams. Let's get into the second look at your stunning sunrise pictures. Okay, we've asked you to send through your sunrise view from your part of the country. Linda McMillan sent us this grey skyline of the sun peaking behind the clouds from Durban. Partly cloudy conditions can be expected in Durban, reaching a high of 32 degrees. Please keep hydrated and keep applying sunblock with SPF of 50. Then Sharon Gopman posted this golden skyline from Balito. It seems like you can expect a hazy day with humid conditions reaching a warm 32 degrees. We love your, seeing your stunning sunrise pictures. Please continue sharing them on our social media platforms and we will show them live on the show. On to devastating weather news. A severe storm yesterday around Bambirstad in the Northern Cape has left a trail of destruction. Not only did it claim two young lives when a wall collapsed on them after seeking cover, but at least 100 houses, churches and other infrastructure were also destroyed. Local residents say they have never seen anything like this before. The Pogwani municipality and the social development department have pledged to assist the storm victims. And in Guazulu Natal, the R33 near Dandi was yesterday closed due to flooding of the upper Tugela River. The Tugela is the largest river in Guazulu Natal and one of the country's major rivers. 
Now we have a second look at the temperatures for the rest of the country, starting off at Bolo Guan in 1928. If you find yourself in Bombela, do expect some thunder showers, also a maximum of 34, uh, 34 degrees Celsius. Pretoria, 1627. Josie Mamboneng, your temperatures range from 15 to 26 degrees with 40% chance of rain. Mahi Geng, 1829 is the way you start off your Monday morning. 18... Klekstorp, rather, 53% chance of rain forecast for the day. And if you find yourself in Kimberley, do expect a maximum temperature of 34 degrees. Bloemfontein, you kick off your day with a low of 15 and will reach an afternoon high of 31 degrees. Richards Bay, it's a mostly sunny day, peaking at 35 degrees. And Peter Maritzburg, 19 is your low and your high is 33 degrees. Be on the lookout for, th for some thunder showers. Uh, Durban, South Africa's playground, 23, 32. MTA Tata 17 kicks off your Monday morning, reaching an afternoon high of 33 degrees. And East London, 926. Cradock, it's a sunny day, peaking at 37 degrees. Do not forget your sunblock and keep hydrating. Port Elizabeth, 1823. And George, 1522 are your temperatures. Cape Town, your temperatures range from 15 to 22 degrees. Also be on the lookout for some showers, as 25% is forecast for the day. Vooster, 1231. Sutherland, 920. Eight and Uppington coming through with a maximum temperature of 38 degrees. This was the second look at your stunning sunrise pictures and the weather forecast. We'll have another look at the top of the hour. For now, remember, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. Mm. It is definitely going to be a feel-good kind of yes. day. I want to do a bit of a throwback. A throwback. On throwback. Throwback. And a throwback. A throwback too. indeed, yes. <laughs> on Friday, we asked you guys what your weekend faces look like. Mm. And of course, everybody came through with their stunning pictures. I love it. I love to see a throwback. it. Uh, a throwback. <laughs> this is a beautiful throwback that we got. Uh, hashtag Expresso Morning Show. This one came through from Nombulelo Zandile Kama, who says, Guzobam Nandi. Love emoji, love emoji. That's my weekend face. And you can see, basically, Guzobam Nandi means it's about to get lit it's hey. gonna be nice hey. it's gonna pop off and you can see that that's a girl that's on standby for it to pop off give us yes, the face no, we need to see say that tandy, we, say tandy. we have another one that came through from mark gavin say where your funky mark okay <laughs> okay mark that's that's funky that's funny and funky i love it wow. we love to see it wow that is so cool i love that mask okay and then we got one from aj josephs who says good morning my fellow rsa citizens hashtag expresso show sabc3 happy weekend stay safe everyone hashtag happy weekend pose i mean listen look at that face look at that pose yes, this girl is giving you slender tender <laughs> for, for your gender. gender i love it ah oh, beautiful stuff and i love you all guys thank you so much for those pictures you were not here on friday give yeah. us your uh, weekend pose face well, you, you know me every day you see me it could easily be a friday so even now <laughs> this is my weekend look Yours? what is it what, do, what is it like this that <laughs> <laughs> wow, we need to work on that. While we take a moment to work on the pieces we can face, we'll see you just after this. What?
Welcome back. You're still locked in. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And you're chatting to someone truly, truly special. And knowing that he was destined for music from the tender age of six, Durban-born singer and songwriter Nick Billington grabbed attention by posting covers of his hit songs on YouTube and even getting noticed by Britney Spears as she posted the cover of Give Me, Give Me Ma <laughs> on her website. Now he joins us this morning amidst the release of his new single, You Get Me High. Nick, Yes. how thank are you, you brother? Very well, thanks. Ah, it's good having you in the studio, man. Thank you for coming all the way from Durban to yeah. join us so that we can chat about your music story and your latest single. But we're going to start at the genesis, okay? Yes. When Britney Spears noticed you, how did you know that, you know, um, posting covers on YouTube or your social media pages was kind of the way to go in terms of introducing yourself as an artist? Well, honestly, it, it, I didn't know that it would happen. That took me by surprise. Yeah. But I think... For me, it was just about getting yourself out there and just trying to be heard and, like I say, putting yourself out there. And um, I think it just, it just happened. Yeah. And I was sort of, like, taken aback, but, you know, you've got to go along with the ride. I'll, I'll, I'll ride you, this wave. What yeah. do you say when Britney Spears is, like, shout-outs to you? <laughs> well, I'm a massive fan, so yeah. when I saw it, like, I actually saw it for myself before anybody told me. Yeah. I was, like, literally browsing through the website. I was like... Oh my gosh, that's my face on there. Um, and then with that came like a whole lot of press and, you know, people contacting me. And mm. that's sort of what got the ball rolling for me. Oh, that is yeah. so awesome. I love hearing stories like that. So look, yeah. you're coming from uh, the Genesis, as you mentioned, from the album covers. But you're kind of steering more towards a different direction now. Yes. You've got the new single coming through, which we'll chat about very soon. But where's the, what's the reason for this sort of navigation through this uh, industry and the music world and you expressing yourself? Differently, yeah. So the thing is, you know, music changes all the time. Yeah. Um, the music industry is constantly changing. So you cannot stay with the same sound forever. I mean, I, I was on Expresso with you guys 2013, I think mm -hmm. it was, yeah. which is a long time ago. That was like my yeah. debut album. And since then, a lot has changed. I haven't put anything out. So um, it's just about evolving with the times and then, you know, keeping up to date with what's trending and but obviously staying true to yourself. Mm. And this time around, I'm just, you know, doing things on my own terms. Mm. Yeah. Doing things your way. Exactly. Let's chat about your latest single, You Get Me High. Yes. What is the single about and what inspired the kind of poppy approach to it? So the, the song speaks about relationships and it's essentially what it is. It's, you know, when you come into a new relationship, from previous ones that maybe have been a little bit rocky, you sort of um, have doubts in your mind, but the song speaks about just ignoring that and just following your heart. And if you love somebody, you love somebody, you know? Oh, I love that. Now listen, I know you had a YouTube channel by the name, I think it was called Backseat Bangers, if yes. I'm not correct. And you were doing some covers and stuff with some of the celebrities around there. So yeah. how different is it now, obviously going from covers to expressing yourself in your own music, like you mentioned, doing it my way. Yes. I mean, is there a different challenge when it comes to that or was it a lot easier now that you have freedom of expression? It was definitely challenging. I mean, just creating music in general is challenging, but I would say the covers for me is just more of like, um, for me at the time was just to test the waters and see what's working, what people respond to. So I sort of use that platform just to see, you know, what direction I'll head into. And then also what I like, because I'm not going to sing songs that, you know, I'm not happy with yeah. and you know, I don't want... <laughs> I don't want to be a part of. So um, it was great for me just to play around with different sounds and, and different genres. And then I finally settled on this, which is like a bit of a retro vibe. And that's so me because I'm an 80s baby. So um, it's just up my alley. Okay. Congratulations <laughs> on your latest single, You Get Me High. It's absolutely, I can't wait to actually hear it on the show, live yeah. on the show. What should we look forward to when it comes to you as an artist? I know it's the end of 2020 but 2021, what's the vision? Firstly, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I'm very proud of this new music and um, so what I want to do is release a few more singles and I'll accompany them with a video because I shoot and produce my own videos as well. So I will be doing that and then hopefully next year 
bring out an EP, that might turn into an album, we'll see. We'll yeah. see, and you have to debut your EP here on the Espresso stage. Yes, please. Without Without doubt. Doubt. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> now listen guys, falling in love can give you a rush that mm -hmm. feels like you are absolutely floating. <laughs> it's enough to forget all the hurt that has come from our romantic past. Now, these are the feelings being explored in Nick Billington's new single, You Get Me High. And we're presenting a special live performance of this catchy track. Yes. Oh, I cannot wait for it indeed. But before we do, here's a little upside on the video and uh, you can add a little snippet of it. <laughs> some things that was not the official music video that was a live performance of Nick Billington's you get me high you can check out the music video on YouTube right now it's out okay yes. that was a wonderful performance thank you thank you, you so get much. me high. <laughs> hey. 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 I can feel that in the, in the summer just it's gonna pop off I'm, I, I can't wait of course and that video like you mentioned is so so good I was speaking to Nick earlier it's got such a different twist to it it's yeah. a monochromatic mm. powerful imagery and I know everyone's yeah. gonna love it but of course guys we've got some more special performances coming from Nick Billington so you don't want to move a muscle you get me high, hey. high, high. <laughs>
December. One Expresso viewer. One chance to win access to movies for a year to the value of 15,000 Rand. <laughs> Going to the movies will never be the same. This will make one epic competition. <laughs> Watch Expresso weekdays to see how you can enter. Competition closes 19 December. T's and C's apply. See you at the movie. Yes! <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> it's my feel good birthday show. Ho, ho, ho. Decorating the tree. It's a big toss during the festive season. We know this. Now, one way to make it a little more festive is by hosting a Christmas tree decorating challenge. The Christmas tree is undoubtedly the focal point for all of your holiday decor, so it should make that statement. And what better way than with decorations and a world of Christmas lights from the crazy store that are essential in creating a tree that's decked out from top to bottom for the holidays. It's how I get into the Christmas mood. So how exactly does this challenge work? Well, you each have a Christmas tree decorating station that's got your own tree set up and then of course all the festive decorations that you could use from baubles to tinsel lights and so much more and this is where you'll show who has the best decorating skills and who's a little OCD we're putting Zoe and Kutler under the clock with just 60 seconds guys 60 Ooh. seconds to create a festive and magical masterpiece and the most creative tree wins the challenge and Santa Claus himself will decide ladies are you ready I know I I've put yes. you through the ringer with all of my, my obstacle courses yes. and our challenges. On. This one is a nice one. I Cute. really like nice this one. Work. And your Cute. decorations are gorgeous. I mean, you've got mirror ball baubles, guys. Get out of here. Get out of here. Got to be a Okay, <clears throat> it is. You've even got snow. You've got everything that you can use. Mm -hmm. But it's 60 seconds, guys. <gasps> so don't rest on your laurels. Get cracking and enjoy it. Ladies, are you ready? I'm yes. ready. In the you count ready? of three, two, one. Start <laughs> decorating. Do it, you can do it. Beautiful. So it's going straight in there with the fairy lights. Just using her interesting technique, swinging it around. So it's going for an optical option with her. She's got lights. Kutle is looking beautiful with a splash of color. She's got the traditional silver and the green. We are approaching the halfway mark, ladies. I'm seeing the mirror ball baubles going on. Can I come to the looking, front? You can, you can go wherever you want, man. It's your Christmas tree station. Um, ooh, now we've got the beautiful um, tinsel going on. We've got gold glazed <laughs> silver. It's looking beautiful. You've got 20 standing by for 10. You remember, you've still got snow to use as well. We're gonna get some snow in there, beautiful. I just I wanna get, yeah, that's fine, I wanna get some snow in there because I'm Santa Claus. There we go. Yay! And one. And put oh, down my. your snow. <laughs> nice. Guys, what do you think Ooh, of your, like your colours? Can, can you please explain your station to me, Zoe? So, this is a 2020 tree. We uh -huh. only focus on the front. <laughs> <laughs> you put your resources where you have them. Exactly. Where, where it matters. This is a 2020 tree. So I love lights, so I went for the lights first. I know there's a big debate, do you put your lights on first or second? And then because tinsel is gonna make and pack the biggest punch, I went all out with it. I would have loved to have had more baubles, but I don't have enough time. Yeah. So well, you got this one. is my tree. You got one on the there one home. No, no, there are there. There's are a, a second few. one. There's, there are are two. Um, let me move across to Kutla Adams. <gasps> Stunning. Um, talk me through your design concept. Oh, wait. I actually need to turn it like this. Okay. okay so we'll start this side. Oh, there we go. Does that work? Can you guys see it? Yeah, that can looks you nice. See it? So, you know what? I went for the color scheme green silver because the tree is white and it complements okay. very, very nicely. It's very subtle but very present. We have obviously the Christmas lights going on, Santa dancing around there. Very pretty, adds a little bit of character. I mean, it's a party. We have to. It's a party. You know what I mean? It's a party. We have to, we have to, we have to. And just everything. I threw this on here just for fun. For fun. And it's all about fun. 
The use of, of snow is, is fantastic on both of your trees. <laughs> Ladies, you've outdone yourselves. Give yourselves a pat on the back. <laughs> I'm going to think about this for a moment here. Um, Christmas tree decorating, probably the most magical part of making your home festive ready. So when it's uh, time for you to bring your home together, make sure that you are properly stocked up on Christmas decorations from the Crazy Store. You've seen their wide range and mm -hmm. magical collection that they have got to help you make every moment that much more special. And I would suggest do this with your kids, man. Just be careful when you give them the snow. Um, but these speciality items are going to make your Christmas so special. These Christmas tree creations are amazing. I'm going to come to the front just to have a proper look, if you don't mind. I think you should. I'm going to have to go on overall look and feel. Mm -hmm. And exactly, and <laughs> symmetry. Where's Naughty Elf? Naughty Elf is watching. Naughty Elf is watching. Guys, you've both done a fantastic job, but I've got to say, on a snapshot, uh -huh. okay, my winning tree creation, because of the color scheme used and matching it to the white background, and because you got one of the mirror ball baubles on it, I'm just a big fan of this <laughs> era. I'm going to say Kutle is the winner of our Christmas tree challenge. <laughs> Um, and yeah, like I said, the, the snow comes with a with a provisor. Don't give it to a Zoe Brown or a Kutle or your child. Um, but absolutely beautiful, guys. Love it to find the latest Christmas decorations and ornaments um, that you definitely need for your tree this year. You need to stop by your nearest crazy store for affordable and, let's be honest, crazy deals. Make sure to follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to learn all about their brand new, exciting, festive items available this season. They've really gone all out. And let's be honest, it wouldn't be the holidays without a giveaway. So this week we want you to tell us why do you love shopping at the crazy store for Christmas gifts specifically? Remember to include that hashtag, the crazy store Christmas, and you could stand your chance of winning a festive hamper, including all of these goodies, a crazy store hamper worth a thousand rand filled with toys that would make every little girl or boy's festive dreams come true. And you can find the terms and conditions on expressioshow.com and the competition runs until the 16th of December 2020 and I'm just waiting to be sprayed with snow. But high five. Gone. High five, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> My snow is finished. I it's, it's, it, it really is Christmas, man. It really is Christmas. Well done, ladies. Great job. Yeah. Great job. Whoever you are, whatever you need, you'll find great value for the whole family at the Crazy Store. So duck into a store near you and be surprised. <laughs> well done, ladies. And I think I have a Christmas wish where I hope that G is going to be the one putting my presents under my Christmas tree. He looks like the coolest Santa ever. He does, he does, he does. <laughs> now, guys, with Christmas just being around the corner, we thought we'd bring you a banging breakfast to start the day and one that you'll keep, uh, will keep you going all day long. Now, it's a be well oven baked frittata, and it'll take you from hungry to happy in absolutely no time whatsoever. So, another magical meat free Monday recipe is coming right at you. And I've got the beautiful Jamie Lee Donberg to assist us and show. I how. can't stop laughing. You know, the behind the scenes stuff that we say. Right, I just don't know why that shirt is open. It's <laughs> like Monday, you know, it? it's like <laughs> unshackle yourself on this Monday. Freedom is here and liberate. And I that's me in this uh, outfit right now. Listen, let's get into the recipe <laughs> rather. This is a frittata. So frittata is an Italian inspired recipe. So okay. it's basically like a, a baked quiche or a classless quiche or omelette. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with this. We're going to uh, do all our uh, ingredients first. So. We're going to go with our three eggs going in right over right. there. And then we have some quinoa. Nice. Which I know it's you love as well. Carb, of course. I yes. love the fact that it's also gluten free. It's got some good fiber in it too. And the fact that you're adding it with those eggs has already got a balance of carbs, mm -hmm. protein, and fat in that alone. And I see you've got some polenta. Some there. polenta. I worked with this last week on the show. If anybody was watching, we made some chips with it. Such a cool ingredient again. Also gluten free, the way I understand it. But it's such a good carb. It's really good. It's got fiber in it. It's got all the essentials that you need for a meal. So it's a a far better alternative than the gluten heavy foods that we're putting foods. in our bodies right now. So the fact that you're making this from scratch is tickling my trash is bugs. It, is it ticking yes. nature, nature boys, boys boxes? Going, yes, yes, yes. So what's and next? And then the spices, obviously. So we're going to go yeah. in with our salt, uh, some pepper. All right, keeping it standard and then to start, yeah. The three C's the three chili, C's. cumin, and coriander. Ah, so chili, okay. 
powder, lots of chili there. Chili. So you're Anything taking even... over from Chef Clem, of course. Do you not like chili? No, I, I don't mind it. Uh, it's not an issue, but I do have a little bit of a sweat here and there. I wasn't born in the heart of Durban, so I can't handle all, all that, that heat, but I can relate. Listen, I if a man relate. can handle all the heat in my food, he can handle me, okay? Oh, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Are you the little dynamite in a man's I, life? I, I love I love some some good, you know, chili in there. And I want to feel like that heat in your mouth, just like... <laughs> Count to 10. Okay, it's hitting me. Okay, so our spices are going in. And then some bicarb soda just to be the binding agent in here. That's going in as well. Okay. Some sesame seeds. Very and nice. then our garlic flakes Ooh, is going some in. Some good well. antioxidants, some good minerals and vitamins coming through in here. I'm loving all the boxes you're ticking in. I know, Girl, but yes. I'm going to be ticking another box What's for you. What's that? Some protein powder. So this is perfect oh, for to keep nice. it cooler for longer. Wow. Because for breakfast you want to have something that's going to fill you up. I've never actually had breakfast on Christmas because I wait for like you the midday prep. lunch and then I'm just like <laughs> go in. But I think it's actually a good way to just to sustain you while you're sitting in church, just making sure that you're full so your stomach doesn't so go. So you can <laughs> slay all those hymns in church. Of course I love <laughs> I love the fact that you're adding protein to this, because already, like we spoke about it now, you've got some good fats coming through. The fact that you've probably, and what it seems like, going to be using that canola oil, which is great. It's got between mono and saturated fats. This has got the good kind, so this has got a lot of good fats, mm -hmm. which is great. And the fact that you've also added protein into this is making it a complete meal. So when it comes to your macros, protein, fats, carbs, that's ticked. And I would even suggest this as like a pre-workout meal or a post-workout meal in the morning, getting some good protein from the eggs and the powder again. Oh, yeah. It's going to kickstart your metabolism. So you guys at home wanting to kind of get your shred on before Christmas comes and just destroys it again, obviously. This is a great meal to kind of keep you in shape. So I'm loving this. The bodybuilder out there might love yeah. this too. Nice. And shred maybe on Christmas because I mean who doesn't want some yeah, who doesn't need some shreds? sense of protein on the day. Okay <laughs> so we're going to take one scoop of our tangy Be Well mayonnaise going in there. What I love about this is there's no eggs. It's gluten free. It's dairy free. So it's perfect. Ah, awesome. Again ticking off all so the boxes. So now you got, yes. me, you got me on something. We're doing a meat free Monday and the fact that the canola mayo is obviously from Be Well and the fact that it's I guess mm -hmm. vegan it yes. would be a cool alternative I would imagine if you were to take the egg out of this recipe you literally have an entire a vegan uh, meal essentially I think you can replace that binding agent with uh, I can't remember the exact term it's something like a fava, oh, but it's essentially like the the liquid you get in uh, chickpeas so you know they store chickpeas mm -hmm, in the liquid mm -hmm. in the can you can actually use that as a substitute instead of your egg if you really want to take this take up a notch and go fully vegan on this meal so yeah. really really cool that, that you're doing perfect. this perfect I love that let us continue yes let's continue so we're gonna take <laughs> three of our canola oil so one, two, three. It's smelling like a, a cake, weirdly enough. And, and I know you've got the three C's and the spices in there, but I'm smelling a, a, a warm, sweet, cakey uh, scent, yes. scent here. This is weird. I don't know you're why gonna... you're smelling cake, but maybe because you're craving some cake Maybe. Right now? <laughs> okay, then so this is obviously just to going now? to stir this all in. It's going to uh, make like your actual agent for it so <laughs> I like that when you're more. mustering up the words here while you put all your elbow grease into this yes. burning Actually, some coals you do that but now what we're gonna do is once this is obviously all uh, forming we're gonna grease our tin and then that was already pre-greased we're gonna put this in over there and then this is where you can get creative whatever okay. you have in your fridge uh, we have spinach over here we have some corn we have some feta if you want to go completely uh, vegan you don't need to add that the feta uh, some red peppers and our mushrooms going in and then you're gonna pop it in the oven 180 degrees for 30 minutes boom bam Italian frittata is what boom in. bam Italian frittata simple as that it's literally taken us like five minutes of course guys head over to the espresso show if you're looking for this recipe inspiration and while Jamie gets her elbow grease in there she's gonna finish off on what is a excellent frittata and it's something I think you're gonna love of course we spoke about the fact that it gets all the macros ticked proteins fats carbs and all the healthy stuff that's coming through from canola too mm. maybe you should just I got get, you get, girl get. let me finish up here and we I'm can enjoy it. our breakfast <laughs> Be well, love, food, life.
Captain Blackwell. Snap! Black cat peanut butter. Cool chagalaga. And the quiz challenge! <laughs> Buy any four participating products and stand a chance to win 10,000 Rand daily. Add a twist to everyday meals. Welcome back to it. Yes, your feel good breakfast show, Express or live on SABC3 at the start of a brand new week. It's a Monday morning. Yes, rise and shine. Now, summertime is outdoor fun time. So, you want to make sure that you keep your backyard and your patio areas clean and accessible. It's very important, not only for when you have family and friends over, which you are going to be doing lots of the summer, but also to prevent everyone from tracking dirt inside the house. Now, garden guru Tanya Fisser shows us the wonders that the RE 130 Plus high pressure cleaner can do especially when combined with accessories and cleaning agents watch this hey guys it's Tanya Fisser here your gardening guru and this is segment three of sorting out your garden so we've got the lawn sorted now with the lawn mower the trimmer what about the rest so you know us South Africans are just outdoor creatures we love sitting out on the stoop on the patio whatever you want to call it, on the veranda. And it's getting to the holiday time. So, you know, we've got to make sure that everything's looking okay. Um, especially if the mother-in-law is coming to visit, like, yo, caramba, is that not pressure? So talking about pressure, every home in South Africa needs a beautiful pressure cleaner. Because it's not only for cleaning pavers and verandas, it's also used for cleaning windows, cleaning cars, bikes, boats, Spacious. All of us have something like this. Look at this. The pavers with a whole lot of green mold in it, looking really feewy, puffy, puffy. And furniture that's got some mold on it, it really needs a good cleaning. And using a pressure cleaner really makes the job so easy. Right, so furniture's out the way. What next? Well, we got the machine, baby. All right. And <laughs> Come on, this guy's a beast. Uh, everything is tucked away neatly in place. And everything has a purpose. Really, really clever. And this guy really impresses me. This is the pressure hose. And at no point are you going to have this thing dragging behind you, getting twisted and caught up in something because it's got a little reel here. And look at that. You can just pull it and out it comes as you need it. And when I don't need it, you just wind it back in. Ha! This is what I like. On the side, watch this, boom, open this side up, <laughs> here's the cable. All right, all you got to do is pop that guy down like that and then the entire cable comes loose. Here's your accessories and guys, the rest is child's play. And this bad boy 
you can get a lot of accessories that you can add to it. it means that it's going to do more for you. This little guy over here, that does the window cleaning. Mm, you see that little thing over there? So squishes the water through here, wash, 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 with the right soap that you can also get, and then clean it down. Okay, this guy is caramba. You see these things here? <laughs> they spin at a phenomenal speed. Also then, <laughs> cleaning, and plus you've got the brushing action. <laughs> phenomenal. Alrighty, so what we've got to do is get the detergent in. Bottle sits nicely in the back here. Pop this baby out, and let's get that in. Detergent is ready. All I've got to do now, get the power on, touch the water, turn it on, let the air bubbles work its way through, build up the pressure, and oh, let's get going. Soap's on, next step, unclick this little baby boy, and put our original nozzle back on, guys, and we are then good to go. All right, guys, a couple of things you need to know whenever you are using a pressure cleaner, always have closed shoes because, you know, it's really, really strong and could take off a toenail or two. Always work from the, the edge of your paving away. So rather blow the dirt and grime away into the garden instead up against walls if you're not planning on cleaning them. Well, let me tell you, this cleaning becomes addictive because it's so much fun. So whilst we're dealing with that, pavers, we may as well get the bird poop off the patio furniture Nice and easy, quick and simple. So guys, with the right tools, cleaning really doesn't have to be that much of a drag. It can actually be a lot of fun. Patio's done, dressed, meh. And isn't this amazing? This is what summers are made for. To enjoy our outdoors, which is what us South Africans are all about. And of course, making the job easy and getting time to relax and celebrate. Catch me tomorrow as we show you more Gardening 101 tips and how to get it right with the right tools. Oh, but Tanya Fisser is a wonder woman indeed. Mm -hmm. Love to see your work. But sure, you know, it's nice to stay home and curl up on the couch with a good movie. We all love it. However, nothing quite beats, you know, being laid back in a cinema style with freshly popped popcorn in hand. The lights go off, leaving the theatre in darkness. Oh. And you're left getting lost in the adventure. Oh, just I am just imagining all of that. Now, a new era of wonder begins with the spectacular new superhero blockbuster, Wonder Woman 1984, which starts showing in new metro cinemas nationwide this Wednesday, 16th of December. So why not book a, book a first class cinema experience where you can sit back in the full recliner seats and reap the benefits of a luxurious VIP theater. If you find yourself hungry, well, new metro's VIP cinema have an in-cinema dining menu as well as a licensed Bar lounge. It's, Imagine. It's the levels for levels. me, guys. Now take yourself back to 1984 mid Cold War and watch how Diana Prince, also known as Wonder Woman, comes into conflict with two formidable foes, media businessman Maxwell Lord and friend turned enemy Barbara Ann Minerva, also known as the Cheetah, while reuniting with her love interest, Steve Trevor. We all like that love vibes. Definitely we do. Now listen up because this is something you do not want to miss out on, okay? New Metro and Expresso are giving one lucky viewer a chance to win themselves a VIP card which allows you or gives you access to movies for a full year. Valued at, Jamie, 15,000 rands. Now to enter, reply to the competition post on Expresso, Facebook or Twitter page and tell us what your favorite New Metro memory is. Don't forget to include hashtag Expresso New Metro in your answer and the competition closes on Friday, the 18th of December at midnight. T's and C's do apply and can be found on expressoshow.com. New Metro cinemas are now open seven days a week with all the required COVID-19 precautions in place to keep you safe and you can now book tickets for Wonder Woman 84. Visit newmetro.co.za or call 0861 Cinema. See you at the movies. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show on the on Monday right here on SABC3. Let's do a little bit of a throwback again. Mm. Now, on the 8th of December 2019, worldwide perceptions and standards of beauty were flipped on their head when the Miss Universe 2019 crown was placed on our very own Zozibini Tunzi. What a moment. A year since that historic win, she continues to be an icon for natural African beauty, female empowerment and authenticity. A Mr. Rain that has taken place during a global pandemic. Absolutely. Now, she recently sat down with Hollywood reporter Jen Su via Zoom to reflect on the year gone by and what lies ahead. Well, here we are with Miss Universe Zozi Bini Tunzi on her crown anniversary. Congratulations, Zozi! Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so special to be back with you. Oh my gosh, what a crazy year it's been. Tell me about some of your highlights. It's been fantastic, Jen. Um, I think I've had so many, but um, I think when I think of highlights, I think about landing at home the first time for my homecoming in February, because when I left, I left to compete and everybody was excited and we were all crossing fingers, you know, hoping for the big win. And I remember uh, when, when I was competing, it was around about the time when the Springboks had just won. And so the country was just so proud and we we were in that vibe and we we wanted the Miss Universe crown as well to just sort of seal off our year and so I won and I remember everyone just being so happy and and feeling uh like I wasn't the only one who just won but the whole country so many highlights but throughout the year I think as well just being able to chat through so many to so many people the universe united um, hashtag that we opened and uh, different people from different industries and walks of life that on its own was also special great highlight in my uh, when you were miss universe uh seeing you and trevor noah yes doing each other i love that Trevor, and that was it was amazing and I think it was one of the interviews that I rounded off my my first interview week as Miss Universe and, and then I was like this is such a fantastic way to close off uh, my first media week um, as I'd won so Trevor invited me to the show and I, it was just it was just amazing I mean because he is South African and we were just so in awe and celebrating his success and to be able to meet him and, and to share uh, that stage with him on the day was incredible and how's your family been? They've been fantastic. I'm just so happy that everyone is still healthy and safe, you know, especially with COVID-19. Um, a lot of people have lost so many loved ones. You know, a lot of people have lost jobs, uh, you know, fallen into depression. And I'm so grateful, you know, that my family is still standing, uh, both, you know, financially and health wise as well. About the festive season, who are you going to be spending Christmas or the holidays with? Hopefully my family. I spend every festive season, every Christmas with my family. Um, and so I'm hoping that this year doesn't change as well. It's, it's tradition for us. I mean, we all go to whatever part of the world or whatever part of the country, but when it comes Christmas time, everybody you know comes home to celebrate together and so i'm hoping that's going to be the case this year as well and when do you think you'll be flying back um i don't know yet i don't know yet i'm still to find out what are some of the christmas traditions that you do um well i don't think yeah. i don't know if you particularly celebrate christmas or more of a festive season um, I think what we usually do, I, I guess it is tradition for us to come home, regardless of where we are and what we're doing, um, to wake up every morning for Christmas, go to church, come back, uh, make a Christmas lunch for everyone, and then just, you know, sit Christmas together. Lunch. What do you guys eat for Christmas lunch? Everything. <laughs> Everything ever see the most fun part is everybody comes together with their own dish that you probably learned throughout the year and you just want to impress people and you're like, I have something new this year to share. And so how we usually do it is everybody comes with their own kind of dish that they make and then we all put it together. So it's usually a variety of everything. You are obviously moving on to so many bigger platforms as well. Um, what's happening for the future? When I think about music for me, and everybody has been asking me about it, are you going to venture into music? Is this something that you're going to do? And I feel like it's something that I've run away from or I was scared of. Oh was that God, you sing so beautifully. When I heard you sing Beyonce on Instagram, <laughs> I 
was like, whoa! Too much. And I think I've come to fall in love with music all over again. I mean, I've always loved it, but I never thought it would be something that I would pursue as a career. Because for some reason, I was just like nervous about it and just so scared um, to say, you know, this is something that I would want to do. But um, I feel like that's a new kind of space that I want to occupy next. So it's definitely going to be in the books for me one way or the other. Uh, definitely going to try to, um, you know, navigate that I am fascinated by television as well so people will definitely find me there as well uh, but moreover I think um, as people I believe we, we serve such a bigger purpose in life than just ourselves and so humanitarian work is something that's also close to my heart something that I've started with Miss Universe and Miss South Africa and hoping to continue um, even after I'm done. And a final message to your family friends and fans in South Africa. Um, oh my goodness, you know, seeing that it's almost a year since I've been Miss Universe tomorrow already, um, or rather today, depending on when <laughs> this interview is coming out. But um, I just want to thank you them so much. Thank you to them so much for uh, the support that they've shown since I've been Miss South Africa into my journey um, as being Miss Universe. I mean, they are a biggest part of, of um, you know, this journey and for them to be there to stick it up for me even though they don't know me i think that's like the most beautiful thing about it jen is that i've never met half of these people and um but they're always there to root for me every morning you know when i wake up on a post or whether they're sending me um, a dm or sending me letters or they're just always there and i, and I appreciate that so much they make this um they make this work so much more worth it Congratulations, Zozi, on a fabulous year. I am so proud of you. And you. I've watched you bloom and grow, and you've really taken this and made it your own. So congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Lots of love. Beautiful. So beautiful that she still carries herself with such grace mm -hmm. and just the positivity that she exudes, like just knowing what she's going to give for the next 2021. And we look forward to see what you are going to do with, uh, you know, your next journey, Zozi Beanie. Absolutely, Manu Zozi is also just inspiring. She's inspiring to everyone across the globe. So it's just great to see how she has grown this past year, regardless of the global pandemic being thrown at her just like that. But now we're just going to touch base with you guys on our social media platforms particularly our YouTube viewers who view from all across the globe. Absolutely. This one comes from Nelson Salgado. It says, OMG, I want the host, if possible, to say my name and say hello and send greetings to my country, Honduras. Say my name. We are saying your name, <laughs> Nelson Salgado. Is that, is that, is that good for you? Say it can again. You, can you say it again because he wants all the hosts? Nelson Salgado. <laughs> he says, please, I watch the show every day because I stay up until very late at night working from my computer at home while all wow. I know. Nelson. Shout outs to you. Thank you for joining us here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. This one comes through from Uvuyong Lapai. She says, greetings and good evening from Ecuador. Uh, when I was still in SA, the show was one of my favorites. I can only watch online now with the seven hour difference. Such commitment. Uvuyong Lapai, thank you so much. All the way, what are you doing there? Actually, let us know, Mana, what are you doing there? When are you coming back? Are you even planning on coming back to SA? What's happening? But thank you for your loyalty loyalty and commitment to us here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Listen, we are down to the last hour of the show. It's time to get into those news headlines one last time. Thank you very much, team. A final look at those news headlines starting off nationally here in South Africa. Eastern Cape Premier Oscar Mabuyani is in talks with the national government about a decision to close beaches and parks during the festive season after neighboring province KwaZulu-Natal recently made a similar request. The Premier spokesperson said the Eastern Cape government and its municipalities took the decision to close beaches and parks during this the festive time because they pose a huge risk of spreading infections. Government would also consider new measures on future funerals because many COVID-19 cases stemmed from funerals. The Gauteng Health Department yesterday pleaded with family contacts of matriculants who tested positive for COVID-19 to go into quarantine. This as some 950 of those matric learners contracted the virus from a recent single year end rage party in KZN. More than 1,300 learners from Johannesburg and Tswane were in attendance and 1,050 of them had reportedly been found through contact tracing measures with 
fears that the event may result in an even further spread of the virus. The department is worried some learners may uh, rather have refused to cooperate with officials. In international news, Sudan's Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok arrived in Ethiopia yesterday with what a senior Sudanese government source said was an offer to mediate in the conflict in its northern Tigray region, a proposed Ethiopia's government dismissed as unnecessary. Hamdok, who was accompanied by Sudanese security officials, also planned during his two-day visit to present his country's concerns about threats to its security along with its border with Tigray. Thousands of people are believed to have died and more than 950,000 displaced. Germany is to go into a hard lockdown over the Christmas period as the number of deaths and infections from the coronavirus has reached record levels. The new lockdown will run from Wednesday to the 10th of January. Chancellor uh, Angela Merkel uh, blamed Christmas shopping for a considerable rise in social contacts. Non-essential shops will close across the country from Wednesday, as will schools with children to be cared for at home wherever possible. Only essential shops, such as those selling food, would remain open. Restaurants, bars and and leisure centers have already been closed since December, or rather November. And next, news of three major pageants coming up. It's been announced that Miss SA 2020, Shudu Fadzo, Musida, Tato Mosetle, and Natasha Jube will represent the country at the Miss World, Miss Supranational, and Miss Universe pageants respectively next year. And with these three exceptional ladies representing the country, it's no wonder there has been ample talk on social media of South Africa begging all three titles. Oh, yes. The Miss SA organization's creative director, Werner Vessels, uh, said that the three patents represent different values. Miss World must be a woman who is sophisticated, elegant, and will live out an ethos of beauty with a purpose. Miss Universe is all about vivaciousness, embracing one's femininity, and being empowered as a woman. And for the Miss Supranational title, for which South Africa will compete for the very first time, Vessels said that the judges would be looking towards grassroots movements and competitors really making a difference in their relevant communities. Something that uh, should fit Tato Musele as a medical doctor perfectly. Well, that's where we leave it for this morning. Here is a final look at your sports. Thank you so much, Tabi. So now to take a final look at our sport and a roundup of the weekend, starting with the rugby, the Curry Cup Round 3 wrapped up this weekend with victories from Western Province, the Bulls and the Lions. Now on Friday, Western Province beat the visiting Pumas 28-14 at Newlands. And the Sharks overcame the table-topping Bulls 32-29 and the Lions claimed a convincing 39-23 win over the Cheetahs in Bloemfontein. Now the Bulls are topping the standings on 33 points after this weekend. And now moving over to the Premier League in the English Premier League this weekend. The big clash between Man United and Manchester City played out to a goalless draw on Saturday. And now in other major results, Everton edged Chelsea 1-0, Burnley stunned Arsenal 1-0, and of course Tottenham Hotspur and Liverpool recorded one all draws in their respective clashes against Crystal Palace and Fulham. Now the Premier League football action will continue tomorrow evening and you do not want to miss out on that. And then finally in our motorsport news, Red Bull's Max Verstappen claimed victory in the season-ending Formula One race in Abu Dhabi yesterday. Now the 23-year-old Dutchman won from pole position ahead of Mercedes teammates Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton and this was Verstappen's second race win of the season and the 10th of his career. And now the 2021 Formula One season is scheduled to start on the 21st of March next year and I know everybody cannot wait for that. Well that's the final look at our sport and a roundup of this weekend's action. Let's find out what's happening in the latest weather with Kukle Adams. Thank you so much, Uncle Tabsy, for the news headlines. And uh, Ryle, for the sports update, it's now time to get into the final look at your beautiful sunrise pictures. As we do every day, we ask you to send through your sunrise photos on our social media platforms. And some of you have answered the call, starting off with Nick Lombard, who posted this golden sunrise on our Facebook page all the way from the Glen Karu. Then Unombulelo Zandi Legama posted this blue skyline from Soweto. Linda McMillan sent through this gray skyline of the 
sun peaking behind the clouds from South Africa's playground Durban. Partly cloudy conditions can be expected in your part of the country, reaching a high of 32 degrees. Please do keep hydrated. Then Sharon Gopman posted this golden skyline from Balito. Those are absolutely stunning sunrise pictures. Please continue to share them how you wake up in your part of the country and we would show them live on the show. UN Chief Antonio Guterres this weekend joined scientists and called on governments to declare a state of climate emergency. Speaking at the opening of the Climate Ambition Summit held online to mark five years since the Paris climate deal, Guterres warned that nation's current commitments were far from enough to limit temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius. He added, if they don't change course, the world may be headed for a catastrophic temperature rise of more than three degrees Celsius. He said that uh, it, this is why he's calling on all leaders worldwide to declare a state of climate emergency in their countries until carbon neutrality is reached. The EU 27 leaders group agreed to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55 percent by 2030. We bring it back home with a final look at the temperatures of our beautiful country. If you find yourself at Bologwane, do expect some partly cloudy conditions with a low of 19, reaching a high of 28. Bombela, it's a mostly sunny day, peaking at 34 degrees, but do expect some thunder showers as well. Pretoria, 16.27, with 25% chance of rain forecast for this Monday. Thunder showers also expected in Josi Maboneng at 40% forecast. Mahigang, 18.29, be on the look out for some rain as well. It rains also in Glexrop at 53% chance of rain with a maximum temperature of 29. Kimberley, it's a sunny day for you, peaking at 34 degrees. Do not forget to stay hydrated. Bloemfontein, the sun is out for you as well at 31 degrees Celsius, but also be on the lookout for 25% chance of rain. Partly cloudy conditions for Richards Bay, 2435. Peter Maritzburg, 1933. Be on the lookout for some showers. South Africa's playground, Durban, you kick off your morning with a low of 23, reaching a high of 32 degrees. Ntata, 1733, with 40% chance of rain forecast for the day. And East London, 1926. Cradock, it's a hot day with a maximum of 37 degrees. Port Elizabeth, some cool temperatures, 1823. And George kicks off the day with a minimum of 15, reaching an afternoon maximum of 22 degrees. The mother city of Cape Town, 1522. And Worcester, 1231. Are your temperatures? Sutherland, it's a sunny day with a maximum of, of 28. And Uppington coming through with the highest temperature in the country, 38 degrees. Sheesh, it's going to be a hot one in Uppington. But with all of that said, come rain or sunshine, make sure to have yourselves a feel good kind of day. And here's some music to continue the feel goodness. We are definitely bringing the heat in studio today because Nick Billington is still with us on your Feel Good Breakfast show, singer and songwriter. I believe you're doing your very own rendition of Billy, jo uh, Billy Idol's hit 1982 song yeah. called White Wedding. Take us through the song. So it's just a track that I really enjoy playing live and um, it's definitely aligned with the new sound and direction. So I thought, you know, why not just give it a go? Morning vibes. Yeah. Morning vibes, feel good vibes. Well, here he is with his very own uh, performance of a Billy Idol's hit 1982 song, White Wedding. So 
Everybody, I love that. Yeah, what does it feel like watching it again? A bit surreal, but cool. Yeah. I know, just that that vibes. That definitely is that that breakfast vibe, that feel good vibes that we all yeah. live for in the morning. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, listen, there's another <laughs> special performance coming from Nick Billington, so be sure to keep it locked right here on your feel-good breakfast show. We'll see you in just a moment. It's my feel-good breakfast show. <laughs> Welcome.
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso on SABC3. Yeah. Now, here's something to think about. Mm. Did you know that the types of attachments you create in your adult relationships and how secure you feel in them has a direct link to the way that you were nurtured and given care as a child? Mm. Now, this fascinating theory was developed by John Balby in the 1950s and is used in modern psychology for work in relationships. Ooh, and as you know, it's Monday, so we're talking relationships. And as we explore attachment theory today we're asking what is your attachment style in relationships because I think every one of us has one yes, the style definitely. of attachment and therapist speaker and trainer Asha Dulab is here today to help us unpack this and discuss it and we're talking uh, to you and engaging with you and taking your questions and comments of our, our Facebook page and uh, our studio line that number is 021-110-5552 so please do connect with us Asha good morning good morning let's start here <laughs> what, uh, what on earth is attachment theory? What is it all about? Um, and why is it critical to sort of define and understand and tap into your own attachment style? All right, so I think the best way to explain attachment theory, it's like the cradle to the grave theory, because it really starts at, look, at looking at the, the bond that an infant has with mm. their caregiver, mm. their primary caregiver, which is usually the parent. Mm -hmm. And um, for a long time, the, the, the theory was about looking at this relationship. And then soon after that, researchers decided that, hey, but this can actually extend to adult relationships, mm. because what they were seeing in the, the bond between child and parent, mm. they were also seeing playing out in adult relationships. Mm. And uh, it's one of the best, most practical toolkits that one can use to understand the way you connect with your mm. partner, um, the way you actually engage, the way you in attract the partner that you that you um, attract into your life, yeah. and also the way we end relationships. It also oh. plays a role in that as well. But it oh, makes wow. so much sense. Yes. When you when you unpack it, when you start to sort of break it down, it makes so much sense. Mm. It truly does. And mm. can you please um, explain the four different types of attachment styles? Sure. So we've got the secure attachment mm. style, and then we've got the three three others that fall into the insecure attachment style. Mm. So the one is secure and the other ones are the anxious mm. type, the avoidant type, and then mm. you get the fearful type, which is a combination of the anxious and the avoidant. Mm. So just to give you a little brief, um, quick um, understanding of these attachment styles, mm. the secure attachment style is one that really feels, comes from a family where they felt nurtured, they felt mm. protected, mm. they felt safe growing up. There was mm. a level of comfort. Um, these kind of young children grow up to feel quite comfortable depending on other people and having others depend on them. Yeah. Mm. And then we look at the anxious style. These are individuals that grew up in very inconsistent homes. Mm. So. You know, uh, at one point the mom or the primary caregiver, it could be anyone, was available when the child hurt their toe. Mm. And then maybe three months later when the child needed the mom or the caregiver, the mom was probably on the phone, you know, tending mm. to a, a task and couldn't respond to the child immediately. Mm. In that moment, the child grows up feeling a bit um, anxious. Mm. Yeah. And, and they can become quite hypervigilant, which yeah. then extends to their relationships in adulthood when they are phoning their partner yeah. a few times a day, mm. checking where they are. Um, and, you know, it's... Uh, it really does sound like all of these attachment styles stem from sort of learned experiences or from experiences mm. that we've uh, sort of uh, had in our lives growing mm. up. And so consistency of those experiences and that treatment and that behavior coming through manifests itself in the way that we then react to situations, react to people, react emotionally uh, in adulthood. Mm. Is it possible though, Asha, for one person to present with more than one attachment style? So be secure for the large part or the most part, but also do display elements of the other three. Absolutely, mm. I think, yes, we can have a mixed bag of mm. attachment styles, and that is why it's so important to become aware of where are you, what are you, um, what is your preference? Mm. And you're quite right in that it's not about, um, like last week we spoke about um, personality types, yeah. these are differently styles which become learned behaviors, which become habits in yes. the way we react yeah. and respond to our partners. Mm. And when we, when we become aware of these habits, we, we're better able to, to manage our relationships and work mm. towards healthier relationships. Mm. Wow. On that note, Asha, please just um, briefly explain the last two, mm. the dismissive avoidant and fearful avoidant before we get into um, our responses from social media. Sure, so uh, we described the anxious one, so the avoidant one, this comes, um, these are kids that sort of grew up in homes where there was actually no comfort. Mm. Okay. And these kids sort of um, 
grew up with scripts where, you know, we you, you get some parents saying boys don't cry, mm. and sometimes there's this um, tendency not to overly comfort your child in mm. the in the fear that maybe your child will will not be independent. Mm. And with this spe specific type, you know, very often these people are viewed as ultra independent. Mm. And this is actually a character flaw because they're actually not independent. They don't have the level of autonomy. So they may come across as independent, but they're actually not. Mm. So these are people that would want to avoid getting too close. Yeah. You know, um, they, they are ones that will say, I'm quite comfortable being alone. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but they're actually craving intimacy, but yet they're fearing it as well. Anyway. Yeah. And quickly, the last yes, one. Yes, the please, fearful, no, 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 please keep going. Please keep <laughs> the going. fearful is uh, the combination of the two, of yeah. the avoided and the anxious, which comes from chaos. A, a child that really grows, grows up in a home with this chaos, mm. there's abuse, there's maybe alcoholic um, mm. caregiver, mm. and that's a very unpredictable, insecure attachment. Oh, I can think of so many instances, so many times mm. growing up where I have had uh, a parent, uh, or, you know, with their child crying, saying, no, leave him there, he'll He'll cry until he sorts himself <laughs> yeah. out. He'll keep quiet yeah, eventually. Yeah, exactly. But you don't realize yeah. as a parent that that actually does feed into the, how the person, how the child then responds to when they're not feeling okay and they're not wanting to, you know, when they're wanting attention and how they get attention and yes. what reaction and response they want to get uh, from other people. Yeah. Ooh. So we asked you on our social media pages, you know, which attachment style do you fall under, rather, um, out of the four that Asha just explained to us? And we have received um, some responses. We're going to start off with Nick Lombard, who mm. says, morning, hashtag express a morning show legends. Awesome pink dress, rocking it again today. Um, I would rather, I'm a very secure in relationships, steady like a rock. Okay. Oh, love to hear it. Love, love hear that. Good, love yeah. that. Oh, he's commenting on Jamie's pink, pink dress. dress Absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah. I love, love that okay. dress as well. So that's good. Do we have another comment? Yes, we do. This one comes from Belinda. She says, Expresso Show, good morning, secure, handshake, yeah. handshake. done deal. That's yeah. what she believes. And I think many of us are easy to gravitate towards that because mm. it's very difficult to um, interrogate those other three and yeah. actually accept um, that, okay, maybe I am anxious or maybe I am kind of repellent to my mm. partner or maybe I don't like engaging in this kind of way or in that kind of way. Yeah. We all want to feel that, feel that sense of yeah. security. But now that you've explained mm. the other four, yeah. I think everyone can pick out yeah. which ones they fall under. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it sounds like, and you tell me please, Asha, is it a job of honesty, of just being honest with yourself when you dig deep into your real style? Because, mm. um, of course, the secure style of attachment sounds like the more positive mm. uh, uh, sort of alignment. And anybody wants to be secure. Nobody wants to say, oh yeah, no, I'm insecure, I love it. <laughs> Nobody loves to be insecure. Mm, okay, yes. But you've got to be honest with yourself, correct? Definitely. Honesty, awareness, mm. uh, work on yourself. Self, um, mm. Raise your self-esteem. Look at what your greatest fear is, because yeah. our greatest fears are, are rooted in our in our intimate relationships. Mm. It comes oh. up there. Oh. So um, yeah, and and look at and ask the deeper questions. Mm. Yeah. What are my beliefs about yeah. relationships? Mm. How do I perceive the world? Are, do I perceive the world as trusting, mm. as as some a safe place, mm. Mm. or am I distrusting and uncomfortable in the world? And sometimes this is the work you can't do by yourself, right? Yes, this is the work yes. that you need guidance in, and that's why we have people like you. <laughs> Absolutely. To help us dig into it. We are going to continue mm. the conversation sh shortly after this. What is your attachment style mm. in relationships? Asha Dulab is here today to help us discuss this and we're taking your questions and comments via Facebook page and our studio line on 071 is 021 rather 1105552. So please do connect with us. I love it, Asha. Uh, such an important <laughs> conversation being had there, of course, when it comes to our relationships. And I think very insightful as well, the fact that we need to be aware of our relationship status and as well as our partners as well. So staying on the topic of relationship advice, of course, one of the ways to increase your happiness and emotional bond in your relationship is by working out together. Now, research has shown that couples fitness can benefit not only your health, but also your well-being. And it also adds to your romantic relationship. Yeah. 
Yes. Now it's proven that couples who exercise together are more likely to stay together as well. So what you want to do right now is grab your partner and join us for this easy couples fitness movement flow. And I'm joined by the beautiful Jamie Lee Zumberg. Hey. So listen, if you're single, you can't do this because then I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're my girl for the day, of oh, course. Yay. I have what I think is a secure relationship, secure enough to allow me to do things like this and really just bring the magic to Mzanzi without there being any jealousy. So Definitely. I think that's a possibility. We love Mel and Mel will actually approve of this flow that we'll All be right. doing today. So Take let's be a couple for the day. Of course, we're still kind of practicing social distancing in the studio, but if you guys are safe at home and you do have a couple that you are intimate with, you're more than welcome to actually touch each other's hands and feet, but we won't be doing so that in this actual you. workout. Oh, no, then I, why am I? You. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Let's All right, get so we're going to do a full body workout, of course, and like I said, it's a couple's workout, and the best part about this is that because you're working out together, you're holding each other accountable. So mid-rep, you can't just let me down, Jamie. I'm going to be holding you accountable. All right, you ready? I'm okay, ready. so let's get down on the ground. We can face each other for this one because I thought, especially when we're in a relationship, it's important to be on the same level with each other. All right, so we're maintaining that eye contact, all right, and during this exercise, you're more than welcome to stare deep into each other's eyes and just gaze at their beauty. But of course, for this exercise, what we're doing is we're staying in a high prone position and then we're moving down to our uh, um, elbows. So we're going and down. And it's commandos. It's like, yes, oh you word. know it. I've seen you be working these, losing those curls. And of course, we're always staying on eye level, all right? Stay on level having good communication relationships okay. important so let's get back up let's raise the stakes up and then we're moving straight back down again so you guys repeat this for exactly 45 seconds on and then we're gonna go for a 15 second break and once you're done with this exercise we're gonna move over to something a little bit more challenging so now in this high prone position we're gonna go for some claps so you guys at home you're more than welcome to go and make some contact Jamie and I'll be showing what to do so right on first reach out to your partner I love you don't forget to clean the dishes I love you no, too baby no it's your turn no it's not it's your turn. <laughs> and of course, reaching out to your partner. And then what you can do, you can take it low as well. So go back on your elbows and do the same thing. And if you are wondering what is actually going on, we are in fact working out. We're not reminiscing over a scene from the Titanic right now. And we're actually really, really nailing the core. My shoulders are burning right now as well. I don't know about you, Jamie. I think this is the perfect way to keep your girlfriend quiet through the workout because she's not going to be able to speak. She's going to be like, I'm just trying to get through this. I'm just trying to get through so, this. So this is actually a great idea. You're talking about something which I think is actually practical. If you're in a fight or there's a lot of like tension in a relationship, start getting into one of these. You can take your anger out on each other while working all these reps and be like, oh, I hate you. One more rep. Let's do a squat. Yay. <laughs> uh, of course. So we've done that lower body. Now, oh, sorry, upper body and the core, of course. Now we're going to work it to the lower body. A little bit interesting now. We're going to use our feet to kind of interact and engage with each other. So we're going to get our bottoms on the mat now. If you are not really jacked with your core, you are more than welcome to put your hands on the ground like myself and Jamie doing to kind of support you if not then well if you are really solid then you can keep your body and support it upright by yourself without the arms so what we're going to do basically is i start wide jamie starts narrow and we're going to go inside and outside each other's legs of course following each other making sure that you are not going faster than your partner staying inside and of course what we're actually doing here although we are following each other's lead and trying to replicate each other we're also working our core our hip flexors our internal and external rotators as well and my quads are even feeling a little bit of a cramp here how are you doing i'm just trying to keep up with you <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting like we're shaking like a kind of I can't even control it. I'm shaking quite a bit, and I think it's because I'm concentrating more on matching your tempo, yes. which is just forcing that mind-muscle connection just a little bit more. Another great one to do in this position, work the core and a little bit of the legs as well. You can get down to your elbows now, all right? So you're taking your hands away, you're getting on your elbows. We're starting at 90 degrees. I'm going to push my right foot towards Jamie, and she's going to match it on the opposite oh. leg. Yeah, there you go. Obviously, our feet could be touching at this point, and we could cause a little bit more resistance, but of course, you guys can see exactly what the example is here. I'm working my hip flexors like you cannot imagine. That's that muscle just above the leg in between the hip and the core. How are you feeling over there, gal? Fine, baby. Love your work. <laughs> oh, you are boo. <laughs> I love our date nights. It's perfect for us. <laughs> and then last but not least, of course, we're moving our way all the way down. We're going to get those glutes. We're going to get the legs and make it a little bit more challenging as well. So we're going to do our couple squatting, but it's a little bit different because every rep that we squat, we're going to make sure that we have contact with each other and check in with my partner, make sure we're on the same page. All right, so we're going now for a squat, starting with the right leg. We tap and then straight back down, all right? So what this does as well, although we are squatting together, it's also forcing us to hit the same tempo. So we're not gonna um, do one more rep uh, than my partner. I'm gonna stay in sync with them. And of course, this is gonna encourage them to get into that unison flow and really connect with each other. And of course, shred some cows at the same time. How are you feeling there? 
Perfect. And now you can make us dinner <laughs> and a nice glass of wine. <laughs> oh, absolutely beautiful stuff. I'm already getting a sweat on, of course. Every single exercise that you guys do as a couple, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. You can go for three rounds in total. You can see us going here. Glowing here as a couple. To take off your shirt and afterwards, just to like get it off. Take it off. Are you actually serious? Take it off. Take it off. You know what? For my partner, I would do that because I love them. So for my partner at home, this is for you. your 100% goodness with Crush. Scratch and stand the chance to win hundreds of goodness prizes for 100 days with hashtag Crush100. Made with love by Clover. It's a Monday and we just want to say do not forget to be your awesome self and that is exactly what we are saying to our weekly Crush 100% goodness peel and reveal contestant Nihal Gordon. Woo! Woo Nihal, Nihal, congratulations. How does it feel to be this week's lucky 100% goodness contestant? It feels very good. <laughs> I, I can see it. Your smile <laughs> is telling. Uh, now, which silver block do you choose, Nihal? Uh, B4. B4. B4 on your side, over I can here. Tell you. Okay, then we've got that. Nihal walks away. Well. Drum roll, please. And Nihal, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> You have just won yourself. I'll tell you now, there it is. It's a new tree bullet, 600 watt. Give it up for the whole. Come on, everybody. Woo. Okay, are you big on like smoothies and stuff like that in the kitchen? Yeah, I've always wanted a new tree bullet, so yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Just in time for Christmas as well. Happy Christmas to you and your family, and just happy holidays in general. And enjoy this new tree bullet, okay? Thank you so much. Well, Nihal, I know that you're going to be whipping up some magic in your kitchen over there. Please do take some photographs mm. and uh, tag us on Facebook on Express or Money Show SAVC3, okay? Definitely. Uh, <laughs> congratulations once again. Now, listen, if you want to be like Nihal and win Crush 100% goodness prizes, here's a reminder of just how easy it is to enter. Are you ready to stand a chance to win 100% goodness prizes with Crush, such as Nutri Bullets, Veggie Bullets, Tefal Kitchen Appliances, Bar Fridges, Skincare Products, Fitness Products, and Vouchers? 100% you are. 100% goodness winners will be announced daily on Expresso from Monday to Friday from September through December. To enter, buy Crush promo packs. See the back of the label to scratch. And if you find a unique code, dial the USSD number on the pack to stand a chance to win immediate prizes or go into the grand prize draw. If you do not find a unique code, keep buying Crush to find the hidden codes. Crush is 100% fruity, fresh, 
tasty and refreshing. Made with love by Clover. <sighs> Well, listen, from winning kitchen appliances to whipping up something delicious, stick around for our next recipe. Because breakfast is key to start off your day off on the right track, but a festive like breakfast is the perfect way to start your holiday. We are talking about flapjacks, and it's always a good idea. And today we show you a tasty twist with our fresh milk stuffed mince pie flapjacks that we all love. It is our little take on crepes or pancakes, and we're going to be making this with our clover fresh milk. And Mr. Ryle got some clothes on, yes. and he is going to be <laughs> taking us through this recipe today. I am going to try, and I'm going to ask you for your assistance here Definitely. because it's the first time I'm actually trying this so we're gonna mix the ingredients together of course and we've got our flour in here I would yes. imagine what we're gonna do after that is of course we've got our I believe this is a bicarb yes some caster sugar, caster sugar yes caster sugar course. for the sweetness <laughs> you can do it savory but we're gonna add some caster sugar with this and then our uh, salt yes, yes. A pinch of salt that we've got over here then I've got some eggs obviously great for binding I love the fact that we're adding protein into this as well just gonna add the macronutrients that we need for this meal so I'm gonna chuck that in there of course and then we've got a special ingredient over here it's nice and warm and it's like a little bit of a gelatin ingredients right okay. so this is gonna to add to that binding um, effect that we're gonna have with these um, little pan I call them like a mince pancake kind of a vibe it's got a pancake feel to it which I which I love it's got that breakfast feel too talk about the pancake I think your pan might be just quite a height so you can take it off for a yes. minute and it's obviously preheated yes. uh, I don't want to have it too high and scorching hot yeah definitely so let's just don't bring want to that burn. down a little bit burn it and, and top secret, I know that uh, Mal usually makes the pancakes, so that's why you're looking a bit rusty today. I'm so rusty when it comes to <laughs> breakfast, because I'm an intermittent faster as well. So anything that's breakfast related, I don't really get involved in. So that's why I'm like, I'm always keen to learn, always keen to try it out. But I focus more obviously on my lunches and everything else, which is quite important. So I'm busy mixing these ingredients together. We're going to add a little bit of our clover some, full yeah, cream milk that's going to give it the for texture. A, a full cup. Right. Yeah, and of course the clover fresh milk with a triple protect ensures you get superior quality with every liter of clo clover fresh milk undergoing double purification and 80 quality tests, a special cooling technology that really ensures it's kept at the right temperature and ultra clean packaging to lock in the move freshness and make sure that our mince flapjacks is going to be creamy and just give all that goodness that we need in the morning as well. Indeed, indeed. Now I'm busy just putting some elbow grease into this, of course, nothing like another the workout yes, in the day. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and this is going to get you the curls that you need and the ones that you deserve to get this meal going on so once I'm done with this we're going to place it into my pan which is now a little bit cooler so it shouldn't burn too much although it is a little bit hot got some oil in there they're so going to work quick with this I'm going to have to work quick with this one so I don't burn it right so I like to obviously I used to just chuck it all in and then realize that that's not the way to go I need to value my portion sizes so we're going to put a little bit into the uh, pan and get our flapjack on now now, I'm a specialist like this when it comes to mountain pancakes and flapjacks. I've like nailed it. So I'm going to see if I can do this quite well here in, no uh, pressure. in the studio. No, no pressure. pressure though, right? So there we're just placing that in there. Oh, yes, it's not too bad. We do know that the secret to a fluffy flapjack is in the batter. So if the batter is too thick, the flapjack will be undercooked inside. Now, if it is too runny, the flapjack will spread out into the pan and won't fluff up like a pancake or crepe. But if you're wanting to make a sweet version of this delicious recipe, use fruit milk mince instead of savory mince and lather with maple syrup for the ultimate festive mood. What are you doing? You need a, a cloth over there? I'm uh, getting a little bit messy. I just cleaned myself up. But I'm actually quite proud of myself because the consistency here looks really, really good. So I haven't oozed out that mixture. I've got a good thickness to it as well. And I've just got the pan on a good amount of heat as well. Let me just turn this up a little bit more. I don't want it to kind of fry. I don't want okay. it to like burn and singe. Otherwise, you're going to get that black edge. So you really want to take your time with this. Work your way through. Once it's ready, you can go for a flip. Mine's still a little bit cool here, but... I think we're ready. I want to do this for the it? camera. Okay. You guys watching? Slow mo. Oh, it's oh, okay. <laughs> the, first, the first one is first never attempt, good. Let's not try too bad. the second one. All right, the second one should be a little bit harder now. This is the fun part. Normally, like when I'm really in my flow in the mountain, I can like flip these up and stuff. But I don't have my mountain. It's not the mountain. I'm we'll, gonna blame we'll the, the mountain that, yeah. today, I'm gonna blame everybody. The fact that I'm not in the mountain. All right, so this one's looking a bit good. Let's go for a little flip. Oh yes. yes. And that the, is what we're talking the about. The best part right now is that you can add your mince in the center. So yes. What you want to do is you want to add your mince in the center, and then you're going to put a little batter on top as well, just to keep that flavor all together, because it is a mince flapjack. It is a mince flapjack. I know, I know you're trying to... So normally, to... what I would do is, before I actually did that flip, 
it's probably a good idea to put your mints in. Yeah. Otherwise, now I've got a hard top over here, which is not going to work so great. So what I'm actually going to do is just play. Do you have a plate for me, Jamie, that I could possibly I don't. put this in? I, I don't. I I'll don't grab know. one from our lovely associates here in the studio now. But what I think is a great idea is plain, 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 plain flapjacks, perfectly done over here. What I'm going to do is another batch just to show you how Absolutely. to infuse the mince pieces into that flapjack. So getting a little bit hot there now. So there we go. We're on that perfect temperature. So now while it's still soft, I have the ability to infuse some of my mince into it. So the bottom is going to go a little bit hot. Thank you for the plate over there. The there bottom's going to be a little bit hot while that's heating up. Put the mince on top. Now it can fuse can in nicely. Now yes. I'm going to put a little bit of batter on there top of this, go. which kind of mixes it into the center of that flapjack. So you're not going to see much on the outside, but you're still going to get that warm mincy feeling on the inside and you get your meat surprise going in here. What do you think of love this that. weird fusion I'm creating? I love this, it. This, you know, there's actually a different recipe, but I'm putting my own spin on this. You guys at home, head over to expressoshow.com. Let us know on our social media channels as well if you've got a better way to make these beautiful mince pancakes. But I'm pretty impressed. Where's that plate over there? Again, like Nature Boy said, you could use absolutely anything <laughs> yeah. for the filling. Use, uh, you can use a leftover gammon from Christmas lunch or even some crispy bacon bits. Ryle, I'm very impressed with Look your mince that. flapjacks. I think oh. that Mal will also be very impressed with this, but if you missed out on any of Nature Boy's mince flapjacks, take a look at this. It's my feel-good worth the show. 
Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express, or live on SABC3. Mondays are all about relationships. Yes, that's why we call them Relationship Mondays. And we explore attachment theory today. We're asking, what is your attachment style in relationships, whether these are romantic relationships or otherwise? And we're back with therapist, speaker, and trainer, Asha Dulab, to unpack this topic. Uh, so do weigh in, as you have, with your questions and your comments on our Facebook page, Express or Morning Show SABC3. And of course, we did implore you to give us a call on 021-110-5552. But we've got some social media comments. Yes, in the mix. we do. Now, which attachment styles do you fall under? Ulukona starts us off saying, Ubana, secure in being single. She's a single queen. And she, loves. and she is secure within that, which we love as well. I mean, it's also very important to be able to accept being single and be okay with being single instead of always like constantly craving or looking out for... Um, uh, 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 relationships or compatibility. Yes. Asha, on that note, do you find cases, do you have cases where people uh, 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 um, find that they become insecure from being single? Just the, 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 the mm. state of being single just drives them into insecurity and they start asking themselves questions like, why am I single? Am me? I unattractive? Do people oh, not yes. like me? I think a lot of people will question, am I lovable? Am mm. I worth being in a relationship? Am I relationship material? Mm. And as much as some people can say that they're comfortable, but sometimes it's really resonant. You need to really ask that question, am I comfortable being alone? Yeah. Because we need to be careful of that um, ultra independence mode that some of us sometimes get into but of mm. course you get people that are quite comfortable being alone mm. happy mm as long as they are true to themselves. Yeah. There's another comment. Yeah, the next one comes from Badudu, who says, good morning, faithful avoidant. If you can oh, just um, unpack that one. that one for us a little bit. Uh, faithful avoidant, probably like he's very comfortable being avoidant. Uh, <laughs> I know that these are people that um, also crave intimacy, but, but they, they fear it at the mm. same time. Remember that um, the, the biggest fear with the avoidant mm. is the fear of rejection. Mm. Can you unlearn that style? Is it possible to reconfigure and find a new way of approaching yes. uh, your attachment style. I think absolutely with awareness and understanding oneself's patterns one can unlearn and, and work towards a more secure attachment style where you feel that you're more you're very comfortable having people depend on yeah. you and having you know you, you depend on others mm. supporting each other. Mm. I think the, the key thing here is to look at the word care. We need to be caring for each other in a relationship, with whether it's with your, your friend, with a parent, mm. with a, a primary caregiver, with your partner. And care is the consistency, mm. it's the attention, yeah. it's the responsiveness, it's mm. the empathy, mm. and I can add the S, mm. cares, mm. support. Mm. And when we have those elements, we feel secure. Yeah. I love that. Sure. And finally, we ended off with Dorothy who says, I'm single, shame, crying emoji, heartbreak emoji. But you've touched <laughs> on just being love, able to be comfortable I love you know, with being yeah. alone. For me, I love the fact that we've just addressed exactly that. Exactly. Dorothy, this is beautiful because the answer has really just been given to you mm. uh, by Asha there. It really is a process of digging in to yourself and doing the work and not finding yourself in a state where you are sad because uh, you're single. Stop making the fact that you're single about uh, 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 yourself and your worthiness. It's mm, not about Definitely that. not. Huh? Now we're going to get into the second part of our conversation. Mm. The first one, we unpacked the different styles of attachments within relationships yes. or intrapersonal relationships, mm. however way you want to put it. But how do those styles of attachment affect each area of your life in general, it's work, mm. friendship, mm. family, etc. And it actually affects all our relationships. So someone that may appear confident or independent in their career may be very insecure in their relationship. Ah. So they can have a very mixed bag of how they respond and react to the outer world and other relationships. So it's again trying to work towards that authenticity and being transparent in all circumstances in life. Mm. Mental health. Let's talk mental health, my friend. Can our attachment style affect <laughs> our mental health? And if so, you're already nodding. How? What is the spectrum uh, to which uh, uh, our attachment style can affect our mental health? So if we look at the anxious type, I mean, those people are very prone to get anxiety disorders. Mm. Um, there's definitely a, a link between mental health and our attachment styles. Mm. And even if we're looking at the personality spectrum, um, these these personality types are very easily can, can you know, because they have the fear of abandonment, mm. they can, um, you know, have traits of borderline personality disorder. 
And then, of course, you have the voidant type that can be a bit antisocial, can lean towards narcissistic traits. So there's definitely mm. a link between our our mental health mm. and our attachment style. Mm. As we were chatting while Jamie Lee and Raul were cooking, um, <laughs> more Jamie <laughs> Lee really because I mean Raul messed it up. Make whatever they were making in the kitchen. <laughs> um, you said you mentioned that you want to clarify something about mm. you know. We also need to be able to take responsibility of our actions and not only place, um, you know, blame mm. for our personalities on how we were brought up or our parents and mm. their relationships. Absolutely. I think it's so important for us not to get into this mode now and saying, oh, my, my parent was an alcoholic yeah. and this is the way I am. And, you know, mm. so we need to realize that our parents have done the very best they can. Mm -hmm. And they still do. I think parents do the very best they can. Mm -hmm. And remembering that they come from their own scripts and their own attachment styles that mm -hmm. probably they haven't worked through. Mm -hmm. So it's just about that awareness. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. <sighs> Mm. <laughs> Asha Dulab, thank you so, so much for coming through and explaining to us the different types of attachment mm. styles that, you know, different people from different parts of the world subscribe to. It's given us a clearer understanding of who yeah. we are and how we act in our relationship. Yeah. So once again, thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so thank much. You. And Asha, how do people get in touch with you? Email info at ashadulab.com mm -hmm. or my website, um, um. ashadulab.com. Oh, thank you very much mm. for engaging us. It's really been fantastic. And of course, uh, your comments, that, let's keep that conversation going. Uh, Asha does look actually at the comments on our Facebook page, yeah. Expresso Morning Show SABC3. And of course, she may throw in a bit of a consultation there and respond to some <laughs> of your questions there. <laughs> Well, listen, maybe you're struggling in your relationship. Why not bond over an epic movie at the cinemas? I hope you all went to hunt down your nearest new metro cinema this past Friday, the 11th of December, for the release of Monster Hunter. Hi, South Africa. It was such a fantastic experience to shoot Monster Hunter in your country. Catch me, Mila Jovovich, in Monster Hunter on the big screen. Oh, wow. I had no idea this was shot right here in South Africa. Now, for those of you who have not yet seen it, go see it today for an action-packed movie experience, of course. <laughs> now, new Metro cinemas are now open seven days a week with all the required COVID-19 precautions in place to keep you safe. To book tickets for Monster Hunter, all you have to do is visit newmetro.co.za or call 0861-CINEMA. Now, remember, New Metro and Express are giving one lucky viewer a chance to win the themselves a VIP card which will give you access to movies for a full year Listen to this, valued at 15,000 wow. rand. Wow, that that's insane. like a movie every day almost. That's insane, I wow. Know. I know, right? <laughs> now, to enter, reply to the competition post on our Expresso Facebook or Twitter page and tell us what your favorite new Metro memory is. Don't forget to include hashtag Expresso New Metro in your answer. Now, the competition closes on Friday, the 18th uh, of December at midnight. And those T's and C's do apply and can be found on expressoshow.com. All we have to say is... See, see you, you at, at the, the movies. movies.
Join the Insider SA this Tuesday evening at 7.30 as we explore the Drakensberg from a farmhouse retreat with Uzalo stars Nelisa Umtunu and Masoja Msiza. Newly crowned Miss Soweto Tobile Stain takes us home to meet her family. And we celebrate Master KG and other winners at the SA Style Awards. That's the Insider SA, Tuesday evenings at 7.30. Repeat Sunday at 12 midday, only on SABC3. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso, here on SABC3. We're still hanging out with singer and songwriter Nick Billington, and he's about to end the show off on a rocking note as we present a special live performance of his rendition, another classic 80s hit, Alphaville's Forever Young. But before we get into that, you've mentioned that you're a retro kind of dude because you live and love and present 80s music. What about it that you love so much? I just feel like it was a, a really good era and mm. it's just something that for me personally it just takes me right back every time yeah. and also with the eight with the 80s music, it sort of reoccurs. You know, it's not something that just comes and goes. Yeah. Every year, every few years, you mm. hear it come back into the music industry. So. And just like 80s fashion, it's always reintroducing itself and Definitely. always evolving. So, shout outs to you, man. I can't wait to see Nick Billington's rendition of Forever Young.
rendition of Forever Young, all the nostalgic feels that we need this Feel Good Monday. Definitely. Thank you for joining us and elevating our feel me. goodness. Good luck with your latest single, You Get Me High, yes. which is currently on YouTube, the video. Make sure to check it out and live your best life. Team, <laughs> how was today's show for you? No. We lived our absolute best life today. So good to have Nick Billington with us, but also so good to have the two boys with us. Because yes. I mean, we haven't it's had so good. this like. It has vibe. been a while. I've missed you all so much. Yeah, I have. I hey, listen, guys, it's the time of the year now where a lot of people start to burn mm. out. It's it's been a long year. It's We've been all had a really tough time. year. It's Whoa, been it's been ten yeah. years in one. <laughs> uh, so tomorrow we're going to be talking about how to cope and deal with that burn out around this time of the year. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah. Do you I know what helps me cope when I feel very burnt? out is mm -hmm. when men just like start taking off their shirts. What? Um, so um, we saw so Ryan. Right. It's Tabsy's turn. Oh. Tabsy's turn. Yeah. 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 Get the yes. theme music rolling. Yes. Theme, theme music. Take it off. Take, Take it off. It Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Clover celebrates spring with exciting giveaways. Look out for selected Clover products in store to stand a chance to win. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.